G'day and welcome to the front runners. I'm Execute. Today I'm joined by a few people in the void, but uh, Badges is here. How you doing, mate? Hello. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Yourself? Good. I'm freezing my butt off. It's actually quite cold here today. Um, We've got Can. Where are you from, Can? Tell people about yourself. You're, you're, you're... Yeah, tell us about yourself, Can. Because people would know who you are. I'm one of the moderators in the Discord, and I live in Scotland. So he constantly wears kilts. That's how I picture him in my head. I've never seen a photo, but that's what I always, just so you know, and you've got the big sash. That's what I always picture. And, and you're like a really big bushy beard and a bagpipe on your back that you use like nunchucks. That, that's just how I picture you. But anyway. um, and SA, how are you, mate? Doing well, man. Thank you. Just got a lot of storms in the area. That's about it. Yeah. So he's on the phone and joining us today. He'll be off and on because apparently you've got some tornadoes in the area, apparently. So that sounds kind of fun and scary at the same time. Um, fun for us, but not for you, I, I imagine. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so we've we got a couple of things to talk about today. Obviously we've got Alien Week, we've got the Banu Merchant Man, uh, we're gonna go through the ISC as we normally do and stuff like that. Oh, I, I forgot to change your background that you sent me, Badges. Sorry. Sorry about that, mate. Not this again. Yeah, you sent me a, a new background. What did you... No. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, you oh, did. You sent oh, me this. no, not that one. Is this, is, isn't that what you sent me? I thought this was a no. new background. No. no, the one was with the road sign. That's oh, the one. this one. This one. This right. one. Oh, this one. This one. Okay, you want that one. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's... <laughs> and almost God, if my... <laughs> it almost if my camera... My uh, camera stopped. So, yeah. That's yes. Good. <laughs> that's karma. That's what yeah, that is. Yeah. That's you staring longingly at my picture. That's where that froze. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's funny. Oh, Algrid's here. Hey, Algrid, why the hell are you not here? Oh, wait. He had stuff to do. That's why he's not here. I remember. Mm. All right. Nice to see some of the usuals. The Geek, McGraw, Sean. Mm, cool. I don't know why. I, I, I can't actually remember why Algrid said he wasn't going to be here. Something about Blackjack and Hookers. I can't, I can't remember. Anyway, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, so we're going to yeah go through the IC in a bit. Um, do you guys want to talk about um, what you think of Alien Week? So, so just uh, you're all being a very bit quiet. I'm going to have to coax it out of you. <laughs> uh, so, so, so um, yeah, just tell me your thoughts on Alien Week. What, like, what, what, do you, is there anything you... The, 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 other than what we're going to talk about later, because I know you guys have found something. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, t tell me what... Uh, what are your thoughts on Alien Week initially, Badgers? Yeah, standard. Um, aside from what we found, uh, you know, I think it's run of the mill. I, I wasn't really expecting anything. I know there was some speculation. Um, mm. But, you know, I love the new Harmony skin they put out. Um, that makes me want to pick that up and put that into my buybacks. Uh, I think that's really quite pretty. Um, Harmony yeah, the, skin. Hang on, let's let's. See. Yeah, it's the one that they're showing in the picture in the background, um, and in, in Fleet Week. Oh, sorry. Uh, for which ship? For which ship? So, um, so it, a bunch of them have got it: the Talon, the Prowler, the Banu Merchantman. Sorry, the uh, Banu Defender. Uh, a whole bunch of them have it. If you and the Nox Q or Nox has it as well. Mm. Um, so if you scroll, yeah. Those there ones. you go. Yeah. That. Yeah, I think that's quite cute. Um, I quite like it. Um, but yeah. Seventeen dollars. What the? Seventeen dollars. Yeah, I mean, what the? Maybe not a seventeen dollars, but. Oh, that's an. That's a, sorry. That's Australian present here. Let's uh, Americanify this. Of all the times where you'd actually want to go to the United States, and it'll be at the top. Of course, it's right at the bottom. Um, you know. It's, it's, uh, what about you, Ken? How are you finding Alien Week? Definitely uh, liking some of the Warborn CCUs that have come out this week. It's a lot better than the uh, Invictus launch week ones. Yep, let's um, let's have a look at that real quick too. Uh, one thing of it, because yeah, they do have a few good ones. Um, I ha the ironically funny thing is I did this video this morning. I don't know if you've seen it. It was on the channel. Um, <laughs> it talked about all this, but yeah. Um, it really did fill the gaps for me because it was really this obvious top end gap. Um, mm -hmm. and it's kind of weird how they've all kind of stacked them, but um, so I remember there being the defender. Yep. Um, so there's the defender, Warbond. Uh, then there was the. I wonder if I can actually 
the uh, Prowler and Merchman both got one. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open all three at the same time, because I might come back to them, so we'll see what happens. I'm do it, doing this live always takes time, but that's just how it is. Um, ship upgrades and ship upgrades. So we had the Defender, Banner Merchman. Now, the Banner Merchman is a, a good and a bad thing, because you're obviously missing out. Or, like, you're just getting an old price, but, like, I don't know. Well, that's another question for you guys. What, how, do, how do you find the price coming up on the Merchman? To be expected, obviously, I think, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It was going to go up no matter what. I think they're doing the uh, the same thing they did with the Carrick, which is just slow incremental increases till it gets to where it needs to be. Yeah. Or well, they see it. It's almost every sale at this point. Of course, this camera's going to kill me today, isn't it? It's done, it's done it twice already. Oh, that's why. Because Sparko cam's not open. You know, because again, I mean, we saw the deck plan, so it's no real big surprise. But just seeing as they walked around the ship and they got onto the lift, the fact that the lift had six floor options, mm. just, again, kind hey, of like, hey, wow. Hey, 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 Spoilers, I haven't seen it yet! I deliberately <laughs> don't watch it! You're fucking spoiling it for me, you bastard. That's all right. All right, all right, I'll get you back later. Well, all right. you haven't seen it yet. I guess I really got you back already, didn't I? Uh, so, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, hmm. you deserve it's it. It's like getting back when you do it first, man. Oh, I just realised I, I had the wrong camera on. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, Isogen, two dollars. Would you rather marry a Zion or a Banu or Vandal? Ooh. Ooh. I've got a female. Yeah, rough... I've got a female cat, and and she nags me constantly. So I, that's the closest I reckon I'll ever get to marriage. But she's annoying as enough. Um, so it'd almost be who talks less, and um, mm, I'd probably have to go with Zion. Yeah, if I had to pick between the three. Yeah. Older and wiser and more calmer, you would have to hope for. Um, the Banu be used to talking all the time because they're sellers, and the Zion would just be wow. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Vandal. Yeah. Uh, the Vandal, sorry, it would be wow. So I'd have to go with. Uh, what, about you? what about you guys? Zion, Banu, or Vandal? If you had to pick as uh, a spouse. Uh, yeah, I'd go Vandal. Like it rough. <laughs> 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 Manu, Am I allowed to say sentence. that on YouTube? Is that a thing? Am I allowed to? No? Oh well. Mm. And where are you, Ken? Banu, the shortest lifespan. The last time you were in the marriage, the shortest Ooh. sentences. Ouch. Uh, SA, what about you? Uh, Zion. Mm, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Same body size, less likely to break you. Actually, she, they've got like a turtle shell, aren't they? Like really, you know, it can be kind of rough. But anyway, uh, whatever. I'm going to get myself demonetized here real soon. <laughs> um, Just going back to the Warbond CCU stuff, um, Feathers McGraw in chat says that they've saved themselves $100 from Alien Week CCUs. Oh, nice. Yep. So yeah. savings to be had should you want them. Especially if you're going up. You know, like, so, so every ship that's above that band of measurement and above that $600 price point. So we're looking at things like the Nautilus, yeah. the Polaris, um, the A2, and I'm going to forget a few. Um, the, uh, mm -hmm. what's, what's that really shitty one? Um, uh, Perseus. Um, <laughs> uh, I think you mean the Odyssey. Oh, yeah, the Odyssey. That was I, it. Wrong, my bad. I got the wrong I one. I think wrong um, one. before yeah. you start bad mouthing the best ship in the game, X, yeah. I would turn the uh, question capturing bot on because it's not oh, doing its shit at the minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll, I'll turn it on yeah. and, and then it, it actually grabs the older ones. So it's actually good. So <laughs> bot is now yeah. on. And if it's not, it's actually good because if there's actually a question there, it actually grabs it and then I know it's working. Um. Mm. Uh, no, it is not working. All right, so I'm going to have to close it down. Do it again. Um, it says chat ID invalid. So I'll try it again. Start. Agrid, type question for me, please, uh, <laughs> Agrid. So at least then I know it comes up. Yeah, the horse guy. There you go. Yeah, there's a there you go. All right, she's yep. working. She's working, which is great. All right. I do have, uh, just a little bit of news, I do have Piggles working on that bot to add it to um, Twitch so we can actually do dual streams. So we eventually will be doing this on Twitch and YouTube at the same time, so covering all the bases. So, um, so he's working on that for me, so I, I have to actually thank him a lot for the first question bot because it's, it's totally custom and yeah, he went above and beyond and it's 
particularly easy to Great. use. All right. Love um, you, pickles. All right. I think we'll. Yeah, we do love pickles. Um, I think we'll. Is there anything else you guys want to add from uh, the actual web page? So things like the ships, the events. Um, I'm going to have a crack at the poster at one point. I don't even know what the mm -hmm. prizes are. Um, um, the only thing I, I think I would add, because it's really cool, is um, for those that didn't see it, they did a bunch of bar sitters and stuff last weekend. It mm -hmm. was in every city that uh, there was a studio. They are, in the coming weeks and months, going to do other ones. Mm. The object that you got for turning up is the little Banu Merchantman lockbox that was in the Banu Defender trailer that you can see that dude holding in his hand. Well, you, get a little, right you get a little box. Um, yeah, so you get a scratch-off code. Right. Um, you enter it, and you get that little Banu Merchantman glow globe cube mm. thing. So, um, yeah, if you can get that's to one worth, in the future... That's um, worth $300 of, of my hard, cold uh, catch. So I'm actually... Uh, I've, been, I've been asked by a few people to go up to the one in Sydney. They're doing one in Sydney mm -hmm. uh, next month, and um, Algrid told me about that yesterday. So... Um, Looks like I'll. I've just. I was looking at accommodation stuff, and it's really cheap at the moment because it's winter. Mm -hmm. So it looks like I could probably get up there and back for three hundred bucks. Uh, and if you know Australian dollars, that's that's super cheap. Um, so sure. I'm, I'm highly considering at this point, just waiting for our grid to let me kind of know the more fixed dates and times and stuff. And yeah, I'll get up there for a couple of days and uh, hang out with some people up there. And that'll be my first passes. Awesome. So I am actually looking forward to it. I might have to shave and look presentable, though. That's a bit of a downer. Because um, I obviously I'm terrible. Good uh, Lord. But yeah. Well, so, don't, so, so don't yeah. you needed like a certain amount of time to clear all the wildlife out first before you're allowed to cut it all down? Or? <laughs> um, yeah, the, the birds complain a bit, but, uh, you know, you get them done. And <laughs> they, they come back to nest in spring and be fine. You know, they, they, they're mm. not too worried. They're not breeding at the moment, so there's no tickling involved, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Roger tickling. Right. So let's uh, let's get over to ISC then. Unless there's anything else you guys want to add, I, as I said, I like there are some giveaways and stuff. For, so, so this this banner poster one. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, so, the mixology was really interesting. It's a, I love that they're getting out of the create things in game mindset and they're starting to get more into like larger scope things because. It drives me crazy. Like, the, you know, if you don't have a, a top end graphics card in a powerful machine, you pretty much are already out of most of these these contests. Mm -hmm. So seeing like everybody being able to do something fun that's in game and out of game. Um, I like it. I actually do find it funny that the the Prowler is off it like so that they get a better prize for the mixing one than, than for the poster one. You know, I think the poster one takes more work, but uh, it's because Jake, uh, as you can see, the guy that posted uh paul was telling me this morning he's uh, a mixologist he actually used to be a bartender and stuff and he originally had a plan <laughs> to create all the drinks from the the g-lock bar um uh -huh. and, and so now he's just getting everyone else to do it because he's got no time to do it himself uh so that, that's, that's <laughs> and, and, and that's and because and he's responsible for this stuff he changed it from cooking to the cocktails but I, does that mean hopefully next year he changes it to something else all over again so yeah hmm I don't know. We'll see. All right, let's let's uh, let's get over to um, this one, Inside the Merchant Man. Now, you need to watch along with me, so I need to switch this to this so you can hear. All right, so that'll flick you boys over. All right, here we go. I think my favorite alien species in Star Citizen if I had to pick one, if I had to, I love them all. Yeah, I have a deep fondness for the Banu. Like the visual architecture. They just seem like kind of cool critical thinkers. The Xion I'm closest to mentally, meaning I know more about them than all of the others. <laughs> they're like the chill, relaxed ones. Even though they're so friendly, they look like they can pack a punch, you know? So far, the ones that have piqued my interest is the one block. They're the, the predators of the space in our universe. And they look really kind of fierce and ferocious. You know, when you encounter them, um, you know you're in a lot of trouble. My favorite alien race, probably the Vandal. There's no alien ship better than the um, the Talon. Isn't the Talon Tavaran? <laughs> it is Tavaran, yeah. But the Tavarans themselves, I'm not keen on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Vandula, they just tick all the right boxes for me. And he's fired.
Oh. Alien Week is here, and with it, our annual celebration of Xion, Banu, Tavarin, and even the dreaded Vanduul. And if you haven't already, check out the various contests and activities happening across social on the robertspaceindustries.com website. But for us here at ISC, we thought we'd take this week to dedicate entirely to exploring the current status of the highly anticipated Banu Merchantman. Now, warning, much of it is still in gray box or early white box phase. Still, there's a- Just a quick question. Badges, can you see the stream that I'm streaming to you? Because SA is telling me he can't see it. No, I can't. You can't see it? Oh, God. Um, I, I am watching along through the stream, but- uh, um... All right, what about now? A lot to explore. No? Negative. Hmm. What the hell? All right, I don't know why it's not working. Sorry, my, my apologies. Floor of its mysterious interior. Let's find out more. I think when tackling a ship that's got so many unknowns about it, it's a you know, completely new art style, or it's not something that a lot of the team kind of worked on before. We kind of need to make sure that we're approaching it in the most sensible way we can. That's what I was talking about this morning with uh, with Paul. Like th this ship is going to be a defining factor for like the, the the defender gave you a taste of it, but when now we've got all the internals of the merchantman coming, it, it, it it's going to add this flavor that we just haven't seen before, and it's going to be the same thing with like the Raelian for the Zion as well. Do you guys think that as well? Or yeah. Absolutely. Um, they, they've got a lot to live up to. I think it's, it's just such a popular ship. Yeah. That... Um, but it's also, you know, like you say, it's our first real look, mm. real kind of flavor of how aliens are going to look in the vast. Yeah. And, 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 um... and that's why I, I, I wonder what they're more nervous about was the carrot, because they knew they couldn't stuff up the carrot because of how popular it was. But here, it's got further consequences down the line. So I'm, I'm just curious to see where that goes. Yeah. This is, this is going to lay out aliens or either. Um, you know, yeah. they're either believable and awesome, or mm. they are, you yeah. know, cartoon characters and 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 not good at all. No, one hundred percent. And and it'll be the same thing when the Raelian comes along as well. I'm assuming that's the ship that the Raelian's going to be for the zone. But yeah, mm. all yeah. right. The other thing with the Banner Merchantman is there's no way to get round. You've got medical hangars. You've got so many different things. Yeah. Um, and they're little alien-y things too, like, uh, on the Raelian with the, um, the back scratcher things and, um, I can't think of a banner one off the top of my head. Oh, well, they, they're, they're taller, you know, so they've got longer beds and taller archways and, um. Yeah, you've got, yeah. you've got the shrine and, and, um, some other stuff that I won't spoil, but yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I really wish when you're doing the streams in the future, don't watch the ISC. Because then we like the reactions and hot takes. All right, so some old thunder. We are jumping in with our devs. Uh, we have got uh, vehicle art director, Mr. Ben Curtis. Hello. Hello. And senior vehicle designer, Mark Gibson. Hello. And we are going to be showing the very real, very current uh, progress of the Banu Merchantman. Before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about where we are uh, in that process. Uh, Ben, we know the Benu Merchantman has been in development for a while, and it's not in development. Set this up for us. Where are we at uh, overall um, in this development? The exterior is going through its gray box pass, um, so it's looking a little bit more advanced than um, the interior of the ship that we'll see in a bit. Um, we've basically got two artists on it, and we kind of chop the ship up into different um, parts that they can work on, and um, we're just going through and making sure that everything that needs to fit in the ship is going to fit in the ship and it's worth noting that this is a landmark uh, a ship for star citizen this is this is one of the biggest ships of its kind uh it's got entirely new purposes with the shops and everything inside it's 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 pushing an, our, an alien race into a new new size and scale that we've never done with any of the other uh, you know ships outside of squadron 42 uh there is a lot uh to this ship so with that Let's jump on in and start with the exterior. Why is this guy still wearing the vest? I don't get that, anyway. So we've got the entire front with its hidden weapons that come out from there for the pilot control. It's dual docking collars, one on either side. 
its wings with the new animation designs for them for how they're actually going to deploy. As you can see, there's a lot of detailing on the wing section, a very elaborate and almost elegant design on it because at the end of the day, this is something they use as a trademark mm -hmm. to show how wealthy they are and well they're doing as a trader. That's a lot of detail, even for Grey Box Face. Yeah, it's a new art style. We, you know, we've done the Defender, obviously, but for the, the UK team, it's, it's a kind of new art style. And also, you know, the Defender is... How do you guys think of the copper as opposed to the gold on the Defender? Just quickly. And they're on mute. <laughs> No, no. I think it's a good change because I think it would be kind of ostentatious a ship that size with that much gold. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Something a little different. What about you, badges? Like it? Hate it? Don't care? Yeah. Um. I don't know if you're hearing SA. Sorry, SA was. Um. Go ahead, mate. Hang on, I have to unmute him because yeah. Was, uh... Go ahead. Yeah. All, all I was gonna say was um. We don't even know what the venue value, I can't, I, you know, it could be that that copper or whatever material it is actually has more of a value to them than gold. Mm. And I'm, I'm looking forward to those differences, the differences in the species and what they actually care about. Yeah, no, that, that, that actually will say a lot about them as a race too. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. All right. All right. In, in the maritime world, we've got a, we got a phrase, um, gin palace for ships that are overly ostentatious and, you know, mm. clearly just there for like a, some rich person's bling um mm. so yeah it's kind of nice that it's not going you know look at me bling i it oh, so, uh, seems to be so a bit more want, functional than that so you want the the merch man to wear 890 jumps as bling i get you yeah that's fine. <laughs> well all right, all right here we go vastly smaller in terms of its size there's a our normal kind of approach to how we kind of layer in the details um, has needed a bit of kind of alteration um, and we've had to kind of think about how we're going to bring in some of those smaller scale elements to give a better sense of size and scale because yeah, you know, when you zoom out from this ship you still want it to feel huge and and you know it deserves to feel huge it is absolutely monstrous um so i think it better show me the animation for this wing you know we've we've had to spend a bit more time working out how we're going to add detail to it there's still a lot to be done there's still a lot of the, the finer details to be added um because that does impact in how we how we model the ship how we make the ship so yeah it's, it's been it's been you know a fun challenge for the artist so far i understand there was a recent change to the animations yep i'll have to go get in oh they were very quick Oh, the animation is nowhere near a final. It was just to make sure we got it in. <laughs> I think it's okay. a fair disclaimer for this. Absolutely no part of what you're seeing today yep. is final. I was like, I remember seeing the the uh, play blast in Max, and they were a, a little bit, um, felt a bit weightier and a bit sleeker than that. Um, but yeah, there, there is. Did you notice how the editor just cut away then and didn't realize that we we're all looking at the animation? And he just cuts it. Mm -hmm. Some kind of subtle movement where you know panels open up. Um, what do you guys think of that? I do like that. It's it's different from what I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, I, I got to admit, when it when it first opened on that, I was like, oh God, please tell me they haven't gone to stubby wings. Because yeah. that's just, the rage would just be, oh yeah. God, Spectrum would be an absolute shit fight for the next week and a half. So um, it's an expand and telescopic in, and I can live with that. that that's kind of cool. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I think they want to try and make it as weighty as possible because that's what makes mm. the reclaimer so cool right is you just you feel the weight of all those animations um you know so slow that down by 80 percent and that'll look really awesome makes me think of like how cool a zion capital ship could be with all of its you know how they've got all the you know the star bits hanging out and then it goes to land and it all like slides up on itself and like folds into like almost like a normal ship and then lands mm -hmm. um that that could be really interesting as well down the road but we'll see yeah all right and they allow for the the kind of like the rest of the wings to slide in and you know as with everything we do we make sure that there's not space magic going on things actually kind of uh fit and function as they should um so yeah you know it gives a few more challenges um but i think the end result is is a much nicer kind of silhouette when you see this thing parked let's move inside let's start with the bridge since we're already there okay so um yeah the interior of the ship like i say is is the main um or you're gonna see now um is mainly in kind of white box the concept mesh um gave us like a really good starting point um 
as always with with concept meshes we had to do you know a fair amount of kind of optimizations and remodeling to kind of get it to the point where we can get it into engine and kind of start walking around it the the bridge is um thanks for the ten dollar tip uh jay thomas Stroud. thanks mate appreciate it try i'm trying not to say the same thing for every area it's massive um <laughs> and and that, you know you can just and what he said there i think is really telling of the banning you know how we're talking about how they're taller i actually thought that like the ship itself is just gonna have to be bigger because they are physically bigger yeah so almost like um a, a less extreme version of micro machines like you know how when you're in a if you've ever played a micro machine games everything's just huge you know but a lot more smaller to that effect because we're you know we're like what six foot and they're like eight foot or whatever so obviously yeah. everything's gonna be slightly off by two foot whatever that is as a percentage yeah. you know what 25 percent, 20 percent, whatever so yeah I, I don't know about you guys seeing this the first time around i was just put in mind of uh two scenes the first is every alien scene where you saw the non-aliens the ships Mm. Um, and the second was the bid in Tomorrow War where they find um, the ship in the ice yeah. and they find the pilots hanging upside down. It really had that feel that just flashed up in my head very vividly seeing this. So they're definitely getting something right to evoke that sort of imagery. Yeah, so ba Banu's somewhere between good alien and bad alien feel at the same time. It, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. So yeah, it does have this relic feel to it, like a, like a, like a like they've... Like the the ships are meant to be very old, but like is in the relic is in it. Like you said, like it's just been found in the ice or something. I could I could I get that feel as well. So yeah. Any any yeah, area of the ship we go into, just know that in the back of my head, I'm thinking it's huge. Yeah, we've we've obviously got the kind of like the the four control seats. See that big seat there really does feel like what you were saying there from Prometheus or Aliens. Mark, do you want to talk through the different yeah. functionality stations? Yeah. So, uh, as ever, the, the Banu don't have captains. They, they're they a very family communal sort of unit, so it didn't make sense to have a, a primary captain station for the bridge section. In reality, everything would be relatively even. So we have the, the pilot seat and control, which obviously with a ship this scale, it's very difficult to get a good view from the pilot seat, to get a good view of what's actually happening. So a lot of the animations need to be very alien so that you can get the pilot into a good position so they'd be able to see what they're doing so we, we use a lot of yes it's like the caterpillar at the back and off to one side we needed another ship like that that this is going to be fun to fly I, I i know that doesn't mean a lot to some people but if you are dead center and you're up the front it is incredibly easy to fly but when you're at the back and you're obviously off to one side you've actually got to kind of judge what is that thing way off to the like, like if you're trying to park just makes it really interesting. Sorry, I had to, I had to share that because I know our grid will understand what I'm talking about. This will make this ship fun to fly. Zion Tech, which do, do, do you boys get what I'm talking about? Like drinkers and SA and yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I've crashed caterpillars into enough moons to know that you've got to be a little <laughs> bit different in uh, <laughs> the way you approach them as to everything else. But mm. I, th I think another side effect, whether it was intentional or not, is people are going to be slower and steadier landing these things, which is going to give mm. them a more stately kind of impression. When people see one landing, it's not going to be someone coming in, doing a J-turn in a helicopter and just slamming it into the deck. This oh, is going yeah. to be a lot more measured, and it's it's going to have that more kind of regal something Wait. of an event. Yeah, that. Mm. It, uh, one thing I will say kind of against the 890 jump, you know how the 890 jump's got that whole flat front part this has got a more mm -hmm. <laughs> almost a rapid river approach um so it will be a, a bit more of an interesting view to me but you know time will tell this is obviously not final but yeah things up through gravity so they can get this fantastic view out the front so you can see where you're actually going so you've got your primary pilot seat then to the right of them you have your co-pilot seat then two stations behind are for the large remote turrets that the ship has for defense so if you ever need it, people can quickly jump into these seats and get into the action to try and defend you from whatever's happening if it's coming up behind or the sides. That sounds a little bit like the Defender's second gunner seat. That Does that mean they just take over for, for, from the main pilot guns? Kind of like what happens in the Defender? So I'd like to see what happens there. Do you guys think that's the same? Or 
I think they're talking about the remote stations under the wings, which have got twin uh, size fours under each. Okay, no, 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 yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Oh, yeah, one on each side. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I digress. Obviously, if it's coming on front, the pilot has more than enough means to be able to deal with it themselves. And if your instinct was to stop the YouTube video and go immediately to comments and say it's pronounced she on Mark, get a better hobby. Oh, I'll say you'd be correct. <laughs> Directly behind the bridge where the actual operations occur, you have some basic features for if stuff goes wrong. So you have some suit lockers to put emergency suits in, because obviously they're not going to want to go around in their day-to-day -day lives wearing a spacesuit all the time. But if something goes wrong, they do want them to hand. So next to the actual escape pods, you have your suit lockers to quickly get suited and booted, and then be able to get into your escape pod and get out of there if you need to. So they have one on either side. I think one it's a really interesting actual... point I'm making there. Yeah, um, um, I'm just wondering, are they, they don't seem high enough, or is it just me? Well, the, I, I mean, I suppose if, it, if it's a wardrobe, um, you know, you could potentially have it folded up in there or whatever, but if it's that sort of a thing. But I, I think it's a really interesting point that they're making in that they're expecting these capital ships, mm -hmm. even when you get into combat, for you to make that conscious decision of, yeah, this isn't going our way. I'm going to go and put my spacesuit on now. Mm. So the time to kill for for something like this is obviously going to be, in most situations, long enough for you to make the conscious decision that you need yeah. to go and put something in, you know, something on to deal with zero G and no oxygen. Mm. So, I think the other point you're making about them looking small for the suit hangers mm. gives you a sense of scale on the ship. Well, I, I just it's expected them. Tall. I just expected them to be Ben and Merchman height, you know, because. I don't know, maybe I'm being unrealistic, I don't know. No? I think you mean Banu, Banu height suit lockers, which I think they are. Yeah. I think the ship is just okay. massive because I think the Banu like space. Okay, true, true, true. Um, I'm just reading something in chat. Uh, someone's saying they don't like landing in third-person view because he loves his emergent by a guy called Junior. And um, Junior, my response to that, aren't they going to have that third-person camera eventually where you see it on your HUD? So you won't even have to go into third-person eventually mm -hmm. when, when they bring that back. I am looking forward to that. Man, there's so many things I'm looking forward yeah. to. It's still something too far yes. away. I, I think Junior's got a point, and I think, Junior, that what that's going to come down to is mm. um, you're, gonna be, you're not going to be landing this anywhere. This isn't going to be landing on unprepared sites on a moon. This is going to be, you know, if you look where they've got it landing uh, or in all the photos, it's all prepared sites. And yes, that's just the art. Challenge but... accepted. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i'm not i will watch mm. from a minimum safe distance mm. yeah. i think the other thing is this will be something in an exercise in multi-crew where you have people in the remote stations telling you distance to the ground etc mm. etc yeah I, I i do like that there is a slightly more communal approach because and, and, and ironically badges you can talk to more to this more than probably most of us well actually you guys are all kind of military based so you can kind of school me here but um you know on a bigger ship it would be more communal would it not even in human sense you know like yes you have a captain but like you're working together no as you as you you know no no nobody can do, there's no way as in real world terms there's no way you could go out on your own badges and control an aircraft carrier like you need a team, yeah. yeah. And so my whole point being is because they've built this around a team, does that make it better or worse? Or, um, I I think from from what they're saying here, you know, and from what I know of the Banu in the lore, in terms of it's all communal and stuff, that makes sense. I mean, for warships, it's done primarily for mm. cost saving measures, right? It's the the idea of everyone having their own cabin and their own ensuite. But, yeah you want that space for weapon systems and such. Mm. But this is performing an interesting kind of dance between two, right? Is You want all that space because it's going to have important delegations on board and it's going to do mm. these trade deals with people who are going to be used to a certain level of luxury. Mm. And it's balancing that against the Banu's own thing where they do everything communally. They don't have, like, um, a... Uh, they don't have a captain per se the crew kind of work together but there is no one person in charge okay hmm. well All crew right. that would be on the bridge as well as a couple of extra because 
leading a little further down, we actually have the, the more habitation side of the ship, but we'll we'll get to that when we get there. Directly behind, we also have the entrance. Um, Bonfigs, no, it doesn't come with a defender by default, but it can house a defender. Um, he's just asking, uh, does it come with a defender? But yeah, no, you've got to buy one separately, Bonfigs. And I've got to be honest with you, Bonfigs, just just earn one in game, mate. It's already in game to earn. Just just get the birch man, earn one in game. True way to get inside the main man turret. This is kind of one of the rooms that we spent a bit of time kind of playing with in white box and making sure we got it right. Uh, we really wanted this to kind of feel um yeah you know, like quite a moment walking into it what's the the thing from x-men man i forget all the time <laughs> the, the uh the thing in the room god every time i see uh, it go on, Jack. what's the name of the room don't leave me hanging here, oh, guys. that's that's where what's his face goes in on his um yeah he's brain on thing. his wheelchair isn't it to, yeah, yeah. To... we sound like a bunch yes, of babbling someone's gonna tell me into... cerebro that's it that man i had it on the tip of my tongue Oh man, Lovely. yeah, yeah. Sh but Shiggy, Shiggy speaks my whole thing there. Like he's execute me because, like, yeah, quite honestly, uh, I, I forgot what it was. Uh, but yeah, you, I, go you, ahead. you said that you wanted us to, to, you know, you wanted the hot takes, and my hot take when I first saw that was, holy crap, that's cool. Yeah, uh, and I, if they do this right, this could be a fully awesome room. And I almost wonder why it's almost shrinistic, isn't it? So yeah, so, yeah, yeah. All right, wait, I have to quick play. Wouldn't let me do it. No, no. It, it, okay. Even even in gray box, this is quite a moment here. Yeah, there, there was some really nice bits in the kind of concept where you had these kind of like um these these like lit walls, and we tried to kind of pull some of that into. And I think it's almost having that kind of moment of um. Uh... Does it look like that walkway? I almost want to go back a little bit, but I know I'll go back too far. Hang on, that walkway. Uh... Yeah, see, I'm going back too far. I knew this would happen. Yeah, does that look like that? That's like a walkway you can turn off, like like you get so like when you get in the chair, the walkway kind of like turns off and then. No, or, or am I saying I, something? That's I say it looks raised, and I wondered if they were going to put some water or something underneath it. Yeah, mm. that that for me, or whether there's mist and some sort of projection on on the walls, mm. but some sort of an effect. Yeah, around this... the side of the walkway would be great. Yeah, it kind of leads to some kind of magical thing or sci-fi thing. I shouldn't say magical, but yeah. In grey box, this is quite a moment here. Yeah, there, there was some really nice bits in the kind of concept where you had these kind of like um, these these like lit walls, and we tried to kind of pull some of that into. And I think it's almost having that kind of moment of um, uh, like solitude before you kind of get yoinked up into to battle. Um, so it's you know quite a lonely area of the ship everywhere else on the ship kind of feels like it's it's built for like like mark was saying like the family whereas this is kind of very purposeful you, you know what you're getting into as soon as you walk in that room and obviously the exterior shell there when all said would, done would open up and reveal yeah. you to the that sense yeah absolutely it. so an, an interesting thing about the the turret because it, it's probably some people are going to be curious about is how it actually works because the, there's no big arm there behind it i so currently they've got placeholder guns there too, because the other thing is it's um, it's meant to have the Tang, uh, what is it, uh, the, the, the uh, Tang, Singe Tachyon cannons, Singe Tachyon cannons, because it, they're bringing them back for the bigger ships here. So that makes me wonder how strong the Venom Rich one's going to be having those Singe Tachyon yeah. cannons as well. So, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, what is it? Uh... I think they're size nines or size sevens or some shit. So they're gonna that's... size fives from the turret. Size five, okay, still, still pretty large, um, pretty, pretty strong. So yeah, oh, we'll see. I think like that. Once again, it's using alien technology that's keeping it up in place, which is what the plinth is for behind it. And there's an air shield that will be going around the top of here, so that when you actually enter the turret, you're not um, venting the entirety of the room. Um, obviously, that does mean that people could try and sneak onto your ship, but while your turret's manned, that might not be the safest thing for them to do. I love that Xion fight of the Navigator tech. Moving down from the actual bridge area, we then move into the Sanctuary. So, the Banu are known for... Okay, I know that's just a normal set of stairs for the Banu, but it's already more luxurious than the one that appears in the 890 Jump. Because look how wide it is. 
It's not this single yeah. little cramped piece of crap. Um, so they're learning. Well, let's just put it that way. Or being very multicultural when it comes to their religious beliefs. So they have... I've seen this, uh, this movie. Don't open the jars. They're, they're full of snake things that jump on your face. I've seen this before. A entire area dedicated to worship to fortune to hoping that things are going to go well for them or that the next trade deal is going to be a good one so this is sort of at the end of the tree of life which is how the entire ship's built around and it makes sense for it to be at the end of the tree because it, it's where everything comes out from so it was important to to keep that feel that it runs through the root of the ship We're going off the side of the sanctuary area we have the med bay something that People are very curious about where it actually was. Um, it's just off to the side, just behind the bridge, just near where all of the actual habitation is. You have a primary medical care bed, which will do your day-to-day -day actual healing. And then you have recovery beds, similar to the ones we have on the Carrick. Now, rather than just being a bed, decide to try something a little different. It's now these pools of healing gel that you'd lie in just to recover from any significant operation that you had that's kind of cool yeah little, i think a little bit of a kickback to the um you know the, the controls on the, the zion scout because they were meant to be gel at one point weren't they so, yeah yeah, yeah they, uh, someone just said in chat uh, they're like back to tanks <laughs> that's a funny way to look at it. yeah yeah i think it was exactly yeah, what i thought when i saw them yeah that's interesting um it could be some really, a really cool animation there too. It almost looks like, and I'm just going to go out on a limb and say I'm picturing some kind of flower petal animation, just with what the shapes of the the things there. But we'll see. It was again an excuse to kind of just push the ship away from what we're used to seeing. Um, so originally we had like the three beds lined up in here, and you know it was functional. It was you know it still looked good it was just like oh, do you know it'd be really nice though if these you know if you you had your operation and then you know you just sink down into that recovery pool and yeah aims drippings with goo yeah exactly secretly tucked behind the actual medical section is where the actual medical officer would work so it, it's his main station as well as storage supplies for whatever medical supplies that he needs Obviously, at the moment, it's just the back of the bed, but it's where you do refills on the bed or anything else that you'd need to do. Obviously, the doors across the entire ship are very alien in appearance. So, though they they make Whoa. sense, but at the same time, like you, you, it was very. Let's say that again. That was that was cool. They they make sense, but at the same time, like you, you. Very Stargate. Um, I don't know if you boys have seen that, but yeah. So though they they make sense, but at the same time, like you, you, it was very important that like, going across this to make everything make sense to the human eye, but at the same time be so different. So you, you immediately recognize it as a door, but once it starts actually animating and doing something, it it feels completely alien. And even doing the general design of the ship, it was important to keep that consistent something that is easily recognizable but also completely different to what people expect moving on from the shrine area we move into the recreation and social habitation area so you've got your food maker along with areas to actually eat as well as the actual social area so people can sit around talk plan stuff out that's a cartography room is that a cartography room, or is that just me? Guys? Officially, it's just their hangout space, but they seem to have holotech all over the ship. Mm, okay. Maybe it's just me, then. Yeah, I think it's... It, like they're saying, it's, it's a communal space, so as well as the eating. And this is going back to what we were saying about the Banu, like, having all of their stuff um, together communally is that whilst they're doing that, they're also talking about this is what we want to do and that. And it makes sense to be in that space because you don't have that same leadership structure you have on human stuff. Mm, true. Okay, okay, okay. And I think yeah, one of the things that we, we try to tackle here is obviously we have very strict metrics for our human characters. And the, the Banu is a, a race are generally a bit taller, a bit larger. Um, so there's that kind of balance between making things um, 
work for both scales of character and, and making sure that you know um we don't end up with you know like I say like the 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 child in the seat. I remember we brought it up in one of the the um the update meetings, and you know the the consensus was well, yeah, this is a Banu ship, and whilst they support all the other races that that we have in our universe, um, ultimately it's their ship, and so things should be made to to their scale. Directly off the habitation area, we have a secondary control for the hangar section. So if someone needs to actually be en allowed to enter into the hangar, you have a separate control room to allow you to open up the hangar doors to permit the additional ship to come in. Bit of Geiger Once stuff again, the too. standard. See the piping and stuff? Bit Geiger. Mm. Doors, but the, the whole animation, all of it's very alien. And obviously, yeah, when we get to kind of final art, we'll dress this up. So it, it you know, um, there does look to be some uh, functionality there because we don't want it all to be, um, yeah, space magic. Um, it still needs to feel like there is kind of mechanisms there that are supporting these these things lifting and, and um, being able to kind of hover and, and float. Coming off the habitation area, we have two staff lifts. So these ones would be specifically for the staff to allow them to move around the ship a lot easier. Um, we'll, we'll come back to them later because there's a, a better point to show them, but they just give you more access just because of the size of the ship. We needed to have multiple ways to get up and down. Otherwise, if you want to get from one part to another, you'd have to run the entire length of the ship, go down the floor to run the entire length again. So we added multiple ways to move up and down between the ship. So at the rear here, we have the staff, uh, sorry, we have the crew specific lift. This has access to all of the floors, unlike the customer lift. This is the passenger entrance area. So the lift uh, will go to this floor for all of the passengers which then gives them a little foyer area before they enter whatever floor they're on. Ooh. We have the meeting area. Like so this is the conference room where important delegates would come to discuss significant trade negotiations rather than I'm going buying a power plant, I'm going to buy fuel. This is where serious conversations and serious negotiations go on. Yeah, this has got like a really nice view out over the, um, like the cargo hold as well, doesn't it? Yep. To the side of the actual meeting and delegation room, we have the VIP suites. So obviously your VIP delegates are going to want something a bit nicer, a bit more special when it comes to where they're resting. So they have their own private chambers so that they can rest and relax and freshen up before they actually go do any significant meetings. Can, can, can correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm talking to everyone in chat and you boys as well. This ship, just from the space, already seems more luxurious than the Agnari Jump, or is it just me? <laughs> yeah, it, uh, part of their, I think there was someone who was saying in the tech, uh, uh, sorry, in the chat earlier that they felt like there was a lot of space and CIG didn't know what to do with it. That's just who the Banu are. They value space. Yeah. Um, so there are, it is intentional, and I think it was said earlier on, it is intentional that these spaces feel big well, well it kind of um, comes back to what i said too about we are physically smaller than they are so it should feel more spacious to us like that that's just a part yes. of it you know so yeah i don't know i i really like it but you know like from a luxury mm -hmm. standpoint i'm just interested to know what most other people think 100 percent more luxurious compared to they you know 100 percent. that's exactly i think I it's also to give that feeling of luxury there's nothing quite like space to do that yeah mm -hmm. but they kind of did with that with the the, the 600i and it failed because it was just space, but no, like, like the one I'd come back to is the, is the actual living quarters. There were no walls. It was just this, mm -hmm. you know, so, so this has walls and all that, and, and it has the space. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes, but yeah. And again, this, this, this sort of... It's also the little things like the little statues and stuff like that they're put in, and, and all the curved architecture and stuff like that. There, there is, it's not just the space. I need to... You know, even in this grey box stage, like, look at all the curved angles and, and look at all the little, like, they have little rock statues and stuff like that. It, it, it feels more spiritual and more, like, more work has been put into this than there was put into the 890 jump. But, you know, I digress. Green oh, yeah, highlights. I agree. It's also the fact that it feels like a designer. If you've ever been on a luxury mm. yacht, like a multi-million pound yacht, this feels like they've really understood the design brief for those and... Mm. Delivered it in a star citizenship. Um, Sandgrover, this is ISC. 
That's what we're watching. But it's okay, bro. You go do you, man. Um, yeah. All right. Um, a lot of the, uh, I guess, the shape language and the difficulties on the ship is that they're... they're yeah. uh, um, Jason A in chat just said, this is going to be more expensive than 8 no jump. I would not be surprised. Really, it, lo it already looks more expensive, does it not? You guys correct me if you think I'm wrong. Yeah. In I, game price, well. I think it's going to be a lot harder to get than an 890, but mm. yeah. actual price, considering the amount of them that are out there, I don't know if CIG will jack the price much more than an 890 jump. Mm. I mean, yeah. I, I think just in terms of aesthetic um, space travel, incorporating aliens i think this is easily shaping up to be one of the best if not the best looking ship in the game a unpopular word. opinion they, feel free to disagree with me in chat they, they have fighting words sir 100 100 <laughs> it's every generation of development the ships get better and better but this shows how much they've learned and and mm. even the thing like behind the 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 tank thing where they you know, this is where you refill the liquid or whatever it was going to be mm. um you know, that's that's something they've never done before. They've never actually explained how you work on the medical bed and the Carrick. Mm. Um, so they're really, this ship is going to kind of replace all other ships as far as the gold standard for their design. Mm. Yeah. No, no, I, I can't disagree. It, it, yeah, it, um, definitely bring it up a level. And hopefully, like as you kind of said, the coolness of this ship and the, the detail and the design and the things learned next one along next up up again yeah just higher what is it what's that saying higher faster further that army thing what's it what's it what's the <laughs> there's, an, there's a a thing where higher faster further or something like that i can't remember everything's curved everything flows yeah, i think that's yeah. captain marvel man but yeah <laughs> fight me and, and there is that kind of like real kind of like leading um See what I, what I was talking about with little statues and stuff? Like they, even in the grey box, they had all those the lampshades and all the little rocks around the corner. Shapes that kind of like lead you through the ship, as opposed to you know what we're so used to on on a lot of our uh, human manufactured ships, whereas you know everything's hard and, and angled and flat. Um, really, the only thing in this ship that's flat is the floor. So the negotiation table has one seat at the top for the actual mediator, which obviously would be a member of the crew. And then even number of seats on either side for the delegates to have their discussions. From the actual meeting room, you get a fantastic view of the cargo hold where all of your goods would actually be stored. As you can see, the amount of cargo that the ship holds is... I believe the official term is, holy shit, Batman. What the... F that is a lot of cargo. And there's even a fog in the cargo bay to limit visibility that's insane i can't say what i was going to say um or what i did say when i first saw this because you would be demonetized in a heartbeat <laughs> yeah. however um one of the things i would love to see with this because to make use of that height are like banu merchant versions of amazon drones moving cargo around <laughs> yeah that'd be awesome just like a yeah. little a little eye orb thing on anti-grav with arms that picks up scu boxes and moves mm. them around because you make use of that height you have a reason to look up and follow stuff around mm. yeah yeah well remember this is supposed to be running 32 scu containers and a crane to move them around yeah. Yes. Yeah, there is that crane. I did forget about the crane. He is right. Mm -hmm. It is colossal. And just the sheer volume of it gives you this oh, cavernous... Oh, there's more at the back. I didn't even see <laughs> Cathedral-like view of being stuck in the rafters of a, a warehouse worth of stock. Yeah, it gives you a real sense of how tall the ship actually is uh, when we get to the, the, the market. Um... Oh, it's like a... Um... This empty is gonna look like like a church cathedral. That'll be that'll be sick. Like, does that not give you cathedral vibes? That that elevator? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Wait till you start bringing things, the ground vehicles up in here and driving them around inside your ship. Mm. It'd be like driving a dune buggy into a church, just like <laughs> oh, the visuals. Anyway, sorry. You kind of get a glimpse at that, but it's not until you get into something like this that spans the whole, or not even the whole height. You've got the hangar above the the height of this. Um, how, how big the ship actually is well we're not going to be able to go through every single room and nook and cranny today this is too big a ship so let's go to the market now and take a look at that
So I think um, yeah, this is what a lot of the kind of customers are going to see when they first walk into the ship. It's this sort of like reveal um, of the market area. And what we try to do in, in, in this area is um, kind of everywhere you walk into it, you're kind of um, walking through a, a small tunnel or you know, quite a tight space so that when you kind of do walk into it, it does then open up and you can see that sort of like that that grandeur and that height of the ship. And, you know, this is only two out of, I think it's five or six floors at this point of, of you know, the... the... Now, correct me if I'm wrong, there are eight shops there. Am I, am I correct in that? Four on that side, four on this side? Did I get that correct? From what you guys... And in chat, you guys tell me if you... If yes. Oh, the, though I wasn't looking what's immediately above and to the right here. So as you walk in... So, 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 so let's go back. And, and now, yeah. that I, now that you know that's what I'm looking at, see if you guys can... Because I saw four... See how there's none directly in front? None yeah. on the top floor, none on none either side. But there's four on the left and four on the right, as far as I can tell. What a lot of the kind of customers are going to see when they first walk into the ship is this sort of like reveal um, of the market area. And what we try to do in, in, in this area is um, kind of everywhere you walk into it, you're kind of um, walking through a, a small tunnel or... or yeah. So there's the... Well, you can see the four, yeah. Quite a tight and then when space. It turns so around, when you kind of do walk into it, it does then open up and you can see that sort of like that that grandeur and that. I, I did make a bit of leap on this side, but he's definitely in a shop now. So I think there's eight shops. That's more than I thought I we were going to get. I thought we were only going to get three. Because there's five on the the privateer. Does that mean no, this has got more it shops? Was to, it was, they said eight uh, at IS. Eight. Right. Okay. No. So they've both so got eight? Last week. They've both got eight. Isn't... No, they said eight for the Baron Merchman at Citizen Con last year. Oh, okay. I think these are smaller than the... Isn't it eight? Shops. But they also have, like, a private bazaar for their more... the rarer wares. That, that's on the... that's a... Yeah, I, I, I saw... Man, I'm going to have to go back and look at... Someone tell me in chat. Carsten, it... Carsten Christen said eight shop on two floors. He said four or five floors. No, yeah, no, I, no, I no, don't no. know if he means all of that as the no, bizarre. No, no. I that's, think he's talking about space in general. That's not what he means. He means it took up two floors of the entire ship. The entire ship had uh, had six floors, yeah. is what it says in the video. What I want to know is, can someone go have a look at the, the, the Kraken and find out how many shops on the Kraken? Because I remember there being five, and one of them was the private one, which was the Drake, where, where the, the Dragonfly bays were. But, I like, man, it's been a while since I've looked at the shop specifically for the, the privateers. So, and I, I'm sure that'll be the same for everyone. So if anyone can find that, and uh, we'll share it around, because obviously everyone wants to know. So it. according to Star Citizen Tools, mm -hmm. um, the Kraken Privateer has eight separate shops, each with 189 SCU of secure stock. And then the private marketplace, so sorry, that was the Kraken Privateer, mm. Um, has two additional shops, each with 189. So the ten privateer, versus, 10 total. 10 versus 8. Okay. All right. Yeah. Interesting to know. But, but I, I was not expecting it to have anywhere near the same. And even at 8, that's quite more than I expected. But we'll see. Height of the ship. And, you know, this is only two out of, I think it's five or six floors at this point of, of you know, the, the part of the ship you're in. Um, but I think it's just a nice kind of, like, reveal of the... The, the overall kind of uh, again just repeating that that size and that verticality that, that we see in the other areas of the ship mm. um i think we've already shown a lot of the concept art of this area already um but the idea here is that you've got this you know hollow in the middle that will kind of you know will allow um the the uh, the traders to kind of show off some of their um items that might not fit in the shops or might be you know too valuable to place in the shops um so yeah there's, it's, it's a very exciting area of the ship this part Okay, and the last Did area we want to show you today is... Kind of... Sorry, say again? Did you spot the uh, little appendage strapped to the roof? There's a weapon up there. Let me go back. Um... Uh, the traders to kind of show off some of their um, items that might not fit in the shops or might be you know too valuable to place in the shops. Um, um, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very exciting area of the ship, this part. Okay, and the... I didn't see it. You sh How far back do I need to go? Oh, you mean this one here, like up in the top center? Yeah, exactly. Ah, uh, that could that be a remote turret for anti theft protection? Maybe I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. If so, um, oh, I went too far forward. Area of the ship, this part. 
Okay, and the last area we want to show you today is is kind of the area that we spent a little bit more time on. It's a little bit further along. We try to take some areas and, and push their visuals, so we've got a good understanding of, of how much work's involved. That is very Indian, uh, like uh, inspired. But anyway, and you know what the kind of like the final ship is actually going to look like, um, because it is such a large ship, and there's going to be a lot of people ultimately working on it. I think it's good to have that kind of key area that you can kind of refer to as, as you know yeah this this is what the merchantman's all about and whilst each area of the ship will have its own feel will have its own kind of uh style and in its own forms um i think this is a good indication of um the kind of elegance and you know if you imagine this is the crew area and the uh guest area is going to be a level above this um i think it gives you a good idea of, of what we're aiming for the other thing is with I'm just calling it now the 890 jump is dead. Uh, <laughs> like if that's half of what it's going to look like, like that had way more luxury in it that in that one room than the rest of the 890 jump had in the entire ship. Um you know, like just abundance. That was crazy. Like you guys think the same or am I am I crazy? Well, I know I'm crazy, but uh, you come on to that at the end if you like. Okay, all right. We'll talk about that at the end the banu that they're very communal in how they actually live their lives so it didn't make sense to have separate quarters or separate captain's quarters because that's just not how they live and mm. getting the, the the social pit for them to be able to sit around and talk and relax and socialize it, it, it was an important thing to make sure that we got in um the, the space needed to feel fine and elegant but also homely someone is going to bring up something about how the banu love night lights because like all the stars yeah and that's pretty much where we're up to with the banning merchantman at the moment and um, this is kind of as hot off the press as it comes there's a lot of areas of the ship we've not shown yet we're really happy with the, the progress we've made so far but at the moment we are kind of at that point where we've got a, a skeleton crew just kind of working out everything that we need to get done to deliver the ship when time permits we'll be able to ramp it up and bring bring on more of the team to kind of get through the amount of work that's, that's involved super excited with where it's up to i think it's going to be one of those that kind of stand out one of those hallmark ships that kind of defines what star citizen is it shows that there's more to our universe than single seater fighters and and the likes i really want to see the engine room uh when it got that working so what did we learn this week well she may not look like much just yet it still has a long journey ahead of her but if the Banu Defender before her is any indication, and given its sheer size and scale, the Banu Merchantman seems like it's going to shape up to be a landmark ship for Star Citizen when all is said and done. And as part of Alien Week, there are also these rad new paints available for select ships that you can see here. So check those out if, you know, looking sweet as all heck is something you're interested in. Mm. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We're still here on the eighth floor of the Manchester Goods Yard building, the second floor of the upcoming new UK office, and this is where I'm told CR's office is going to be when he visits. Also this weekend was the first International Bar Citizen Weekend, so here's some imagery from the gatherings near studios around the world. And don't forget to let us know on social where your events are being held at, as we're going to be sending folks to select locations throughout the remainder of this year. We'll see you all next week. <laughs> that was good. Um... Yeah, so you were saying at the end uh, you wanted to... Yeah, I did, well, the first thing I want to... No, two things I want to say. First off, give more videos of this length. Oops, wrong. Because that was 22 minutes. That's like almost double the length. Well, it's more than double the lengths of some of what we've seen. Um, and the second bit I would say is... Um, I don't know if anyone from CIG watches these things, but if you are listening, you guys are smashing it out of the park mm -hmm. with the bunny Metro. Yeah. This is exactly what I was hoping from alien stuff. That stuff that feels different. You can identify what stuff's for, mm. but it's definitely not human. Um, a beautiful, beautiful looking mm. ship. Can't wait. Definitely, uh, definitely chef's kiss. No, one hundred percent. I agree with that. And I'm sure Ken and Essa, you, you'd say the same. I assume, knowing how you guys think a bit these days. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, dead on. What? <laughs> well, no. I mean, I. So, so the one thing that I I do feel about this ship is that it will not replace the 890 only because of the privacy piece of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's there's no mm -hmm. captain's quarters. It's a place to feel like you're the most important person on the ship. It's a communal ship, so. That is true. It, 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 yeah. It'll have an alien luxury feel to it as far as a merchant feel, mm. but I don't think it's going to have the, uh, you know, I'm very special, look at this awesome yeah. view I have. So, so it's not going to not gonna appeal to the power trippers. <laughs> yes, which I think is for some of the people that probably purchased that. <laughs> and also it's, it's the lack of... Mm. It's just not going to get the bang for its buck. So what? You'll have two guest bedrooms, one for each side of the trade delegation, mm. and then you've got those eight or nine, whatever it was. I think eight. Mm. It says in the on the ship matrix, down in that communal room that we saw, mm. um, that was much more fleshed out than the rest. You, you, yes, it can be VIP, mm. but that ain't keeping that thing afloat. Mm. No way. Um, you know, and if you're doing that for VIP runs, you're doing it wrong because you don't need almost 3,000 SCU of cargo space um, to run four VIPs around the uh, around the uh, universe. Just really quickly, Trade Gator in chat has asked me as if this is live. No, this is pre-recorded, mate. Yeah, pre-recorded. Uh, sorry, you were, you, you were saying. <laughs> Such a fucking troll. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. How often are we allowed to swear? Because I think that's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, every once in a while, but yeah. 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 What, about, what about you guys? What do you think about um, do we want to weigh in, or is that? Yeah, I, I think, I think we, we should weigh in, and I want chat to weigh in too. I want everyone to weigh in because I, I'm gonna be honest. I, I like you go into ISC these days, right? And, and like, let, let's take last week's ISC. It was just crap, you know. But that mm -hmm. I was not expecting that in ISC. That that actually was one of the best ISCs we've had in ages. Not not just the length, but it actually showed me shit I wanted to see, you know. And, yeah. And 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 I not was not expecting like even though you look at the concept images that they showed at the end there again and i remember seeing those at um you know around anniversary last year but they actually are starting like if they can get that that the effects that are in those concept images and they actually get that into the font you know like <laughs> that's all i'm gonna so, say like yeah. like 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 it's it, it's uh it, it's chip born is it for a I reason, love, you know what I mean? Like it's like I love I love Trent's idea in chat. Yeah. Run VIPs as a as cover for massive drug running. So you've got four diplomats on board and yeah. three thousand SU worth of widow in the hold. Yeah. <laughs> I've always said that that smuggling is an art. It's not a show. <laughs> and and the MS art to me is a waste of you know hidden space because you know smuggling isn't about you know the ship that you're doing it in. It's about how you're doing it like you know are the containers labeled milk and there's their widow um you know do you have vips as cover like that's how you do it they did and, that yeah, in a... serenity didn't they in the tv show remember they yeah. had her uh, yeah. like uh, as the the companion and then while they were moving her like uh, pretend it was all about her right under their nose they were smuggling all this shit um i remember that in a very particular episode so yeah yeah 100 percent. i agree with that yeah um i do think there's some just just the whole alien aesthetic is done really well as well the, 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 you know the, the, there's so many different um even human influences you can see like like the cathedral like the the, the bedroom looks like an indian it reminded me of aladdin that's what that's what i was thinking when i went oh, is this Aladdin? you know i was, yeah, wait, I was a, half expecting uh, genie to pop up it's, it's a middle it's a not a ziggurat um forget the name of it but like yeah it's it's the markets that they have in old persia yeah 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 uh, that's what i mean yeah that's exactly. why i said that's why i said aladdin because people you get what i mean when, when i say aladdin but yeah. well, well no so there's there are indoor markets that are buildings that are very mm. similar to this in Hill that you can go to and they're th they're um well these ones are about a thousand years old but there are some mm. that are thousands of years old and they're actually places to stay in there because traders and caravans would go to them to trade and then and they would barter, and that's what this is. This is the the equivalent of a bazaar, a true bazaar that you would find in like Qatar mm. or uh, Yemen or you know, mm. old Persia. No, I don't disagree. Um, and and if you if you really think about merchants or the merchant man, especially in human terms, that that is one of the oldest that I think of. You know, the things that you've all said, like Yemen and uh, the Middle East, and you know they you know, the old spice trails and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's kind of cool that they've kind of taken that 
to heart, so to speak. I wonder if there's some kind of cool tie-in lore-wise where they found out about human history and, I don't know, I digress. I, you know, maybe down the road they'll, they'll do something like that. So, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, Ken, do you want to weigh in, man, before we move on? I think the other thing that people have to understand is this is this is star citizen finally showing the scope and scale of the vision in a ship yeah 100 percent. yeah good yeah. good that's a really good way to put it absolutely yeah well said. yeah and, and and i think i will come back to almost full circle at the start of this conversation uh or somewhere through the conversation um it's definitely showing the maturing of that that ship pipeline um, yes, and and I started even thinking about other ships like we've got to come, like the Polaris, the Crucible, the the Endeavor, all those things down oh. the line. And I was like, oh, I just get excited, you know? Like, yeah, we we know the Crucible's coming, and this just makes me completely wet for it now. I mean, mm. look at the value that this ship has because I have the concept version of this ship. Yeah. I actually unmelted, got, we bought it in my buybacks for two hundred and fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. So this thing's gonna end up around the 890 jumps price point i mean mm -hmm. let's be honest it's it's more ship in every way mm -hmm. so when we get to the point where the crucible is going to be if you're thinking about a crucible or an endeavor mm -hmm. pull the trigger yeah. because their value is going to go up so dramatically and not only just value in mm -hmm. the size the scope but the quality of the design i have to kind of add to what sa said that you don't even have to pull the trigger on the entire ship just pick up that gemini to the crucible or the gemini to the endeavor ccu and sit on it it's 10 bucks and all you have to do is sit on it you know um and then there's no real gamble um but yeah i i, I don't know I, I, just just a quick show of hands between the four of us is there anyone that mm -hmm. doesn't have the crucible or the endeavor i'm curious it, it would be you badges i'm assuming because you don't you don't have as much invested as everyone else uh no i don't um but um yeah i would it's certainly one of the ones that I would consider picking up when mm. it comes around again. Yeah. What about US? Um, you got both, I assume? I have, I think, 15 CCUs for each. Nice. In other news, he's getting off the drugs tomorrow. No, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh, Ken, what about yourself? Do you have a, a Crucible or Endeavor? I do have a Crucible, and I'm going to get shot for what I'm about to say. I don't own an Endeavor. Hmm. I'm going to have to talk to you in the moderation room uh, later today. Uh, no. <laughs> That's fine. It's, it's entirely up to you. Why is that? You know, share your opinion, because we're always about opinions here. So why, why don't you have an endeavor? Just not your thing? But just speak your piece. It's not my thing. I have a banner merchantman. I may be converting one of my other unused CCU chains into a second banner merchantment as of today, <laughs> after having watched really? this video the first time. Yeah. So, like, you know, I've got enough ships. I don't like who needs a cleric when you've got a bad merchantman to go endeavor mm. go and explore again why why do it in uh slumming it in an next military ship when you can do it in luxury mm. i yeah i i think i think for me the endeavor really comes back to just the sheer number of gameplays you can get in one ship um it, it is the pinnacle of the modular system is, is is what i would probably do and and if you look through a lot of the ships that we recommend they usually come back to some like the the core ones like the every modular one is recommended just just simply and i think the exception to that is uh generally the vanguard because it just turned out to be in really in such a bad place but we do recommend like the sentinel because of the warfare because of its uniqueness but like anything else that we you like and i know sa talks about the vanguard sentinel a lot so sa you would agree with me on that yeah that that that, that that's the clear best of the vanguard but the rest of just because of those nose guns there's just something weird about it yeah yeah i mean it, it needs another pass it needs some love but yes the sentinel just mm. because of we don't have the e-warfare warfare package but the fact that it can do that function mm. um brings it into the really it's the only fighter craft that can do that mm. currently in the game yeah, so that and the other modular ships are like the Carrick, the Redeemer, um, the Retaliator, um, and the Endeavor. And I think I'm probably missing one, but you get what I mean? Because it adds that extra gameplay for very little that you need to earn in game. Um, and, and I think the Endeavor is the pinnacle of that. Like, there's an entire master set, and the master set is worth three of the ship itself, which is crazy to me. Um, oh, 
Very quickly, I just want to explain why I have 15 CCUs for each of those ships. No, you don't laugh to. Everyone just, everyone just wants to see who's crazy, and that's where we're going to brand you. you know, okay, go, I, ahead. go ahead. I plan on the Crucible. It's actually the ship I'm looking forward to most. Now. Right. I love the Carrick. Unmelting my Benny Merchantman. Definitely looking forward to the Crucible. But I have those as potential speculation CCUs. And a speculation mm. CCU is that you purchase with a possibility, not guarantee, mm. that one day you're going to be able to use it to get a ship above it. Mm. So if the Endeavor releases and it's $500, I just, you know, and I have a CCU for that, let's say 600, mm. I could upgrade it to uh, Polaris, but I would save 250 bucks. I, I've probably um, got, I've probably got 25 plus of the Endeavor and the Crucible as well, just because um, when we do fix my fleet and stuff, if someone wants it, I've got it there. So yeah. That's yeah, and I've, yeah, and I've given a few to friends that are looking mm. for them. Yeah, definitely. And you've done that on a few other ships as well. You do a lot more speculation CCUs than either an algorithm or myself, because I know you've got a lot of bunch of Redeemer ones and stuff like that too, don't you? Yeah, I have a huge uh, stockpile of different CCUs. And, mm. and in the CCU channel on the Discord, I'm always happy to talk about that topic because it is a risk. You're speculating. You're, you're yeah. assuming based off what you think the ship will be. Mm. And you can take an educated guess, but it's still a guess. Now, I wouldn't yeah. do it with real world money um, mm. because you can get... These CCUs for credits. So if you're going to do it, um, do it for credits. But most of my hangar is just speculation CCUs or, or chain CCUs. Um, I only have, I think it's three ships in game now, four ships maybe. Mm. That's it. But that'll allow um, you the rest to get to some of the bigger ships quite cheap, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. But so kind of, and, and I and I'm using this word because it makes the most sense. It is a bit of a gamble to do so, um, but I think you can. How do I put this? You can make a more educated ships on the ships that it's more likely to happen to. And I think you could very safely put the Crucible and the Endeavor in that basket more than any other because they are the, they are much older. Uh, and and, and well, they are clearly... Point, sorry? No, go ahead. Go ahead, finish. Your, I, I was going to say they're, gonna, they're just clearly going to increase because they're older. They're, they're the last of the old guard. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. And if you're thinking about a BMM at this point, because we just saw what is going to be a pretty, we can all get, take the speculation away now and say it's going to be an amazing ship. Yeah, we know it's going to end up in place. Very interesting flying dynamics, very interesting gameplay. Mm. All that being, um, if you're thinking about getting one, get a CCU as quickly as possible. This it's definitely going to jump in price when it releases, and not yep. a small jump. It's probably going to jump two hundred dollars, if not more. Yep, I would agree with that. I. Like everyone kind of goes, yeah, like I've been asked this so many times, like where is it going to end up? Like I reckon I've been asked, I've answered that probably a dozen times on streams in the last while. I can't tell you where it's going to end up because the only thing consistent about CIG is how inconsistent they are, right? So if I said left, they would go right, right? So if I said a thousand bucks, they'll go 850. If I go 850, they'll go a thousand, right? <laughs> so so uh, just, just, I, like, just, just say... 890 and under, I would say, and I think I kind of answered this last week, I would say between 750 and 1,000. And the reason for that is, is once you go over 750, there's no CCUs, right? So basically, it may be the highest price CC sh ship you can CCU to. It may break that 750 ceiling, right? Which is currently the Polaris, right? So I, there may be a CCU from the Polaris to a Banner Merchman eventually, right? Um, but they won't go over a thousand because of obviously trading and stuff causes a whole bunch of problem with us, um, money laundering yes. laws. Yeah. That's yep. Um, so, so yeah, I, I would be envisioning somewhere between 750, a thousand. And I think we can, we can all safely agree that it's going to go from 600 to 750 without even blinking on release. Right. So that, that, that is the safe bet 750 to a thousand. I hope that answers, uh, questions for people that had that on their mind. So so Badgers and Can, do you guys agree? I mean, is that does that lot make sense to you? Is that a logical statement? Because I mean, I, I agree with X, but what do you guys think? Yeah, I agree with that. The I keep looking at the price of an eight ninety jump and looking at all that you get out of Land and Birchman and trying to go, how do you justify this thing being a hundred, two hundred bucks cheaper than an eight ninety? Been saying this for years. It's about fucking time someone listened to me. No. <laughs> But yeah, that's my biggest problem with Origin. They just don't match what you're paying for. And and like, 
I now look at that eight, that Banner Merchman, and I think you can't tell me at some point they have to go back to Origin and overhaul the shit out of them. And I mean all of them, maybe with the exception of the 400i. But the 890 Jump definitely needs an overhaul based on what we just saw there. Um, and the well, 600i I mean, this- is the same. Yeah, but it's getting one. I think we're going to know where the 890 is going to end up eventually. And I think the 890 is probably, be, unfortunately for their owners, mm. is going to be the last origin ship they ever upgrade, they ever do a pass on. No, I, I, so much. And there's so much to do before it. 100 pence. Hey, Explodo. Amen. Um, all right. So we've got some questions here. Not as many as we usually have. But I'd like to see if we can go through some of the Bannerman. Oh, wait. Let me think about this. Should we do questions or should... No, let's do the thing that you guys found, right? Because I think people in chat would like to hear what you guys have found, and then we can just do questions as one big block. So who wants to go first? Because you guys found some stuff, and I got all these random messages while I was trying to sleep, which is annoying. But I knew something was up because it was... It's basically having a heart attack. But yeah, um, yeah. who wants to go first? Um, who, who discovered it? Who was the first one that found something? Badges? So... It this was actually was... someone that that's in this call but isn't talking. It was uh, highlighted by another mod, Lemming. Uh, Lemming, turn on, question. Lemming, turn on your mic, man. Tell us what. T- tell us where you found it. I'm putting him under the gun now because I've just put <laughs> pulled off the bed sheet. <laughs> there he is. Uh, yeah, Lemming, tell us tell us how you found it, man. I have no idea what we're talking about. We are talking um, about the, the alien uh, ship pack prices mm. and the discrepancy. Yeah. Oh, it was actually on a different Discord. Um, somebody just did the analysis and found out that there's either some buffering or something in the alien pack that just got released because it, it went up in price by, I think it was $400 since the last time that it was offered. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, which one is yeah. it? How, so, how, much, how much is it? Which what, What's the name? So, of what's the name of the pack? Well, um, alien it's the... Complete Pack 2952. It's also got a new name. Mm-hmm. Oh, so the date already. has been updated for this year. Why can't, in other words, why can't I find it? I just just while you're finding that, I'll just run through the, the figures because I've got them to yeah, hand. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, uh, Lemming, if you know if you if you want to jump in, you can do. But um, the, the figures that I've got in front of me are if you add everything together that's in that pack um, without tax in US dollars, uh, you're looking at two seven seven five. Uh, US dollars for the pack. Now the war bomb price is two hundred is two thousand six hundred and fifty. So you're getting a saving of only one hundred and twenty five dollars. Um, the non war bond price is two nine five zero. So that actually comes in at one hundred and seventy five dollars more than buying them individually. So we've run the numbers a whole bunch of different ways. We've tried to figure out. You know, have they just made one mistake and then gone off that? Nothing is immediately obvious. So there are a couple of options. They've just screwed up, and that's it. Um, so, sorry to interrupt you, but is this the right one? Sure. Am I on the right one? Oh, shit. Am I even streaming? No. Um, you're not. No, I'm not sharing my screen. Oh, I'm terrible. Sorry. Right. Is this the right one? Uh, Stand by. It's just a couple of seconds to catch up, mate. So, yeah, sorry. Because I'm not seeing you through Discord, so... Yes. So yes, yeah, cool. that's it. Yeah. So that that war bomb price there is our only one hundred and twenty five dollars cheaper. Now, yeah. what we see with packs normally is you get about fifteen percent worth of value off the core price. So even for the non war bond pack, we'd expect to see that down around the two thousand four hundred, two thousand three hundred dollar mark, and then even cheaper for war bond. So it's either a pricing muck-up or the other speculation that's going on at the minute is that there is an alien ship that's been accounted somewhere in the price that isn't showing yet. So we don't know. But the bottom line is, for anyone looking at buying this this time round, I would leave it the hell alone until you know what's up. Give CIG a chance to respond to what's been put on Spectrum. And, you know, and... Because, you know, at worst, you'll get a better discount. So that's the deliciousness so, that there may be a secret ship, in, in short. Yeah. Possibly. So there is a, one other thing that I just want to mention that it could very well be. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the next price jump for the BMM could be built into that pack. Yeah. So yeah, that was something it is, it's a big price jump. So. They, they've never yeah. they've never done that ahead of time before. And, I'm I'm way more in the camp of that. There's a ship coming yeah. in within the next week, and uh, again, what, what what didn't you work out it was roughly a three hundred dollar ship? So well, yeah, it was looking somewhere around that. So, yeah. um, yeah. you know, and uh, the the maths. It's honestly, it's just too boring to go through. Yeah. But I, I, I hear I, what you're saying. There. I mean, it could absolutely be that. But I think what again mm. turns me off, like it uh, turns X off of this, that idea is it's nowhere near ready because they've said that you know there's only a couple of artists working. Maybe if they were like, yeah, this is really coming. We might even get it this year. Mm. You know, it might be out. Then I'd probably be a bit more inclined to see it like that. That explains um, fifty dollars, but doesn't explain, you know, three hundred dollars. So yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing is, someone in chat, Aurelius Dominus, said that's the VAT. No, they took all taxes off and did all math in US dollars. So it's got nothing to yeah. do with tax. Yeah, absolutely not. Because that doesn't that doesn't apply either. Um, it, it doesn't. The, the math doesn't work out. So we tried that with VAT. We tried it without VAT. We tried it using different countries' rates of VAT. Yep. It doesn't match anything, um, you know, because if, like we said, if you take twenty percent off the, uh, well, I mean, mm. straight up, it, 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 that, that math doesn't work. So, yeah, and and Winlord is saying that super super speculation to say that equates to invisible ship. Oh yeah, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. We're not Great. saying it isn't, but like, it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Give Agreed. me, a, like, give us you know, another reason, then, mate. You know, like, give us another yeah. reason for three hundred bucks. And like, again, like Lemming said about, you know, the potential of it. That could all be true. It could all just be some kind of weird math stuff up, and they 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 stuff their numbers. It could be nothing. But like, uh, also like me and Paul said, it was really weird at the start of Alien Week today. No ship. Mm-hmm. That that that's yeah. weird. Again, CIG being the only consistency is being inconsistent. Um, and, and they've done it again. Yeah. So, Something yeah, that it, was also sorry, relayed God. to us is that there was apparently talk in one of the comms or one of the web pages that CIG put up about a new alien ship, but we haven't seen anything about that. Mm. It may uh, well be that it's just running late. Or uh, the other thing is, again, we're highlighting this so that people don't buy a pack that's looking like it's terrible value at the moment. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think what um what. To what strikes us as really weird is how much it's as lemming pointed out right it was a 400 dollar increase mm. that's a hell of an increase from last year but again when you run through the numbers mm. that doesn't equate equate to, to um vat it doesn't equate to any sort of inflation that we're seeing at the minute there's no yeah. there's none of that so it doesn't match any of those numbers so mm. it is literally a case of you are probably right this is a fuck up in marketing because one of the yeah. things we were expecting was one of those prices equates mm. they've got one calculation wrong and then that's just extrapolated out to everything so so, we just well, well, so, at, so so at worst it's it, it's a math error and at best it's a new ship that, yeah. that, that, that's yeah. the takeaway yeah. for me well, you know and i and neither most, of those are bad in my book. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, most likely someone done fucked up on their maths. Yeah. Um, you know, the outside chances there's something in there that's not showing yet. Maybe this was supposed to happen. Yeah. Uh, I at um the end of the year. Maybe this was supposed to happen at the um, anniversary sale. And yeah. they've just Wait. implemented it early. We don't know. I have an idea that I want to run by you guys because it came up as soon as you started talking about the, the discrepancy and then you mm. talked about missing alien ship. What if this was priced with another ship in it that hasn't been released? That's what we mean. That's what yeah. we've been saying the whole time. How slow are you? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's literally what we've been saying. Like and and, and, and accuse up with everything, because they always have a small, a medium, and a large, and the large is always around a three hundred buck mark, you know? Um so yeah, that, that that's in a nutshell. I'm glad you did you just catch say, like half the conversation or something? That was just like say, the most delayed thank reaction. You, mate. It's nice to know that I'm not the only one that gets shouted out on the stream, so I appreciate <laughs> that. Mate. He only he only did that to make me feel better. That's what that was. Captain Slow, <laughs> Jesus. Right. No, no, no. SA's probably been looking after his kids or whatever, so he came back halfway through the conversation. That's fine. Awesome bourbon, sir. 
But yeah, I, I, you know, even Paul and myself, before we even heard about this stuff, we were saying like, oh, there's no alien ship. That's really weird because it doesn't fit with what, like the last, you know, three years they've been doing the same stuff. So it's just really weird that they break the mold like that. But they do do that from time to time. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that Jim Jam thinks you're onto something. He, he thinks you're onto something. Yep, it's all SA. <laughs> None of us SA is on to something, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cough my guts up now. Because I'm laughing. Yeah. All so, right. um, within chat, then um, we can launch into it uh, right off because it's a banning management question. So, mm. Adapt Horse Guy says, "What ship are you guys planning on putting into your banning management?" Uh, so again, what ship do we plan to put into? What our... ship are you planning on putting into your banning management in the uh, internal hangar? I think the defender, obviously, but yeah. The defender. Uh, I can tell you what ship I'm planning to put into your banning management, which is the size five torps of my Perseus. But yeah, that. <laughs> oh, I want to make so many jokes. All right, I'm 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 going to do a poll. Now we've asked that, so I'm going to do a poll for, and it's just simply, do you think there is a secret alien ship? Yes or no? Right? So here comes a poll. And I'll run that oh, for however long we run it. And I'm just curious. Just because, just because again, you do this stuff as a consensus, and it, 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 and it kind of, you know. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, we could all I'm be wrong. I'm going to answer you know? yes to that. You, you, don't have a, you don't have a time scale on this. So if they ever release something mm. without warning us first, I'm right. So I'm going to go yes. Yeah. Oh man, it wants me to log in. No, I don't want to log in. Uh, Rude. No, it's trying to ask me to log in. I don't want to log in. How do I go back? What about what about you, Cam? Oh, what yeah. ship's going in your body management? Yeah. At the moment, I'm kind of thinking a new, which I Sorry? hate to see because it's a ship. Sorry, say that again. You you broke up. Oh, Nomad. Yeah. Okay, Nomad. Why it's not nomad? a ship that I. It's not a ship that I enjoy, but if you're trying to move cargo, you don't want to land your banner merchantman every time you need mm. to go and get some guns, some ammo, some spare suits, mm. food, water. That's a ship you can carry something like 16 SEUs worth of cargo, keep mm. your crew alive, your etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna kind of re-answer it. I would hope that they eventually make a small shop ship that's just like one shop that fits within the banner merchantman. So you could land there stock up and it kind of goes off and, and and sells stuff so you don't have to take the whole banner merchantman down that would be so a cool the, ship that would work the yeah? benny's food truck sort of idea uh more like the one that i told you about that um do you remember the one i showed that i showed you that me and agra drew up on photoshop that time the one that's kind of like a, a circle and um yeah i, I digress because people won't know what i'm talking about but yeah more more akin to that the Benny's yep. food truck is a little smaller than what, what I'm expecting. I'm I'm expecting how big would that be? Um, it it'd be cutlass size, almost. Oh, uh, yep. yeah, it'd have to be smaller, wouldn't it? It just has to be smaller. Yeah, you're right. I think it, it's it, it, it'd have to be Benny's food truck. You're, you're right. You're you're right. Now run, run it through. You're, you're right. Hmm. No, I mean, I think we're gonna get a couple more merchant ships. I think we're gonna get one. You know, I mean, the Banu uh, Merchant Man. I mean, I think it's it's sub cap technically, but it's it's definitely bigger than a large. Mm. Um, no, it's a complete capital now. I see the yeah. it dwarfs an eight ninety jump. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying is that it's 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 grown in size and has left a gap underneath it for merchant ships. So I think we will see another merchant ship. I think we're even going to see like a potentially an Aurora sized Benny's style of ship that could do food or mm. walk this knows what ammunition. Well, if it's um, got if the if the privateer's got ten, this has got eight. There's definitely room there for one that's got like like, and that's the that's a capital as well. They're both technically capital. You this could be one of the first series of ships where we see five ships, where two are in the capital cool. class, and then then you've got to because you work it out, eight, six, four, two, like literally all the way down. If you just you did it all the way down like that, you could you could literally have one in every size class. That's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit bigger. It's it's like two food trucks. Yeah. You know, so one side sells tacos, the other sells burritos. You know, like type of thing. But um, yeah. I I, I I digress. But uh, yeah, I I definitely think we need some more sh uh, 
shops, essentially, shop ships. Um, and I do, I, I, I harken back to a really old video algorithm and I did um, something like building the verse or something like that, we called it, um, where we actually fully eventually expect, because of the way the buildings are being, like everything's modular, you'd also be able to have your own shops on um, stations like rent out a mm -hmm. space on stations. Don't have to own the station, yeah. but you could rent it. And then eventually if there were a player owned stations, you could rent it out to other people. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, just to answer Kyle Ehrlich in chat, um, the pack is missing one of the Vandal ships, uh, but that ship won't be sold. It's the scythe that's missing. Um, they don't sell it. Um, it was a reward, I think, for certain things very early on, and then they just stopped doing it. Uh, and they've said they won't do it again. So you're right. Um, but, yeah, it, that doesn't explain it either. It's also, I think he's not talking about the scythe. I think he's actually talking about the glaive, because there's no glaive uh, there either. No, it's in the pack. Glaive's in there. Man, I, I'm going to stop squinting and just look. Uh, yeah, I think the way to get it back is uh, the completionist pack. Oh, it is there. No, oh, shut up, shut up. I'm wrong. It it is okay. totally there. Yeah, you're right. Ah, yes. What was that? Sorry, what did I miss? I think it's in the completionist pack. Yeah. So yeah, but the completionist pack's like twenty seven grand, isn't it? The whole I was gonna say so it'll only cost you twenty seven grand for that shit. Damn Algrid's got two um, of them. I gotta work on him. I gotta yeah. get him to gift me one. I want one, I gotta get him to gift me one. He got he got them for going past the million dollar mark. So he got one for one hundred million and he got another one for two hundred million. Crazy Mofa, he got both of them. So yeah, I want one. And it's like it's one of the few ships I, I wish I had that yeah. I don't have. Because I like those rare ones. Um Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, so just just from chat for the answers, there's lots of people who would go for the Banu Defender. Uh, Embarkation says Argo Cargo and a Gladius. Um, Zen Strasser would go for the Super Hornet Heartseeker, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, we also have uh, the Geek and Anvil Hawk is going in his. So yeah, some some choice. Which yeah, is nice. yeah. Um, it's it's, it's let's, we're going to obviously go. It's going to be something that extends the ability of the Merchman. Or adds to its defense. That, that's yeah. nine times out of ten. That, that, that's what I mean. Like, 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 I don't see anyone going, oh, I'm going to put a prospector in it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's... But, like, you theoretically could. If you wanted to sell shitloads of ore, you know, you could do that. It could mm -hmm. be your ore sample. Go over and, mm, this is delicious ore. Yes, I will take all your yeah. ore. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I think that's the, the advantage of a, a hangar. You can be flexible. So, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. um, so uh, Alex in chat has asked, perhaps I'm mistaken, but I thought alien ships were supposed to be retrofits, meaning human-focused elements would be installed on the inside. That's a Speria, and um, I do believe the Defender is a human variant. So I think there yeah. is going to be both. Both, right? Um, so it, it just really depends on what CIG want to do. Because, like, the whole Asperia thing was made because of what happened with the Scythe. You know, they, 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 they yeah. said they were never going to sell alien ships. No, no, no not going to do it, not going to do it. And then they did, and there was a, just a shitstorm back in the day. And so that's why the Scythe is so valuable now, because it actually is um, a Vandal Scythe, where if you go get mm -hmm. a Glaive, it's an Asperia reproduction, right? And it's yes. made for humans, where the... So I, I can't even wait till they actually properly do the scythe because like are you going to get in it and it's got all these mechanical things in it to 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 make up for the fact yeah. that so you can actually fly it because technically speaking because of their height and the, the way they sit in their posture and stuff like that we shouldn't be able to fly it you know mm -hmm. um but yeah so yeah is. there are some ships that are, that are altered is the is the short answer yeah. and there are some ships that are traded with directly or they're licensed so like uh air power have uh, god knows how you say that but our power basically have the license to recreate mm -hmm. ships um and the banu uh as someone's just said in chat i think when lords just said um they cater to all races anyway so some of those will be directly tradable from mm -hmm. those races um, can you, um, the can other you, thing, hang, this hang is a small... Sorry, I'm going to ask a real quick question. Badgers, you know the the bird race? Can you say their name for me? The bird race? What, the yeah. Tavaran or the Xi'an? Okay, you said it correctly. No, the other day I heard someone say Tavaran, but they didn't say... They said to, to, to Kavarvan or something like that. It was really weird. And I was trying... I was just... 
it was a British person. So I was just wondering if you were going to say it the wrong again as well. But yeah, anyway, sorry, no. I digress. Yeah, because why they, did I say it wrong? Why did you pick on me? What, well, what the just, hell well, is this, man? Because you said you didn't say a poa. You said blah, blah, blah. I don't know what you said. You didn't say a poa. But yeah, anyway. I, I mean, yeah. How, how do you say a poa? A poa. Is that genuinely how it's said? Yeah, a poa. But you, it's you, you, A-O-P-O-A, you, isn't, it? isn't it? The 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 actual pronunciation. It's a lore thing. It's a little different, but. Also, it is not a uh, reproduction. It's actually a Xeon manufacturer mm-hmm. hmm. for human market. Yeah, I think the guy said it without the V in it. So he just said ter 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 or something like that. It was really weird. I'll, I'll have to find the video. It was a. It was. A, I was watching a. He had a very small YouTube channel, but I was. It was the thing I do. I go around and try and you know look at new creators and try and find people. And he just said this word, and I went, "What the." F- saying but anyway I'll, if i can find it i'll link it in in the description of this video or something like that because it was just weird um and, and and in a funny way not not in a mocking way it was just like i've never heard that word before but anyway um sorry ken we totally tangented and subtracted and we're coming back to you now so, so what were you going to say ken um it's just a little lore piece which is why the banu don't have to adapt their ships the mm. banu actually have uh humans as part of the banu empire whatever go. it's called i'm not the lore guy paul's the the guy to go for lore <laughs> but the banu do have uh humans in their sully so they're not it's having humans on a ship is nothing new to them so they have adapted their ships they also have those seats don't they for example in the defender they hover so they can just adapt to the height of the user and they just have really big backs on them so they you know that they, they they work for anyone so yeah all right, I'm just just real quickly. Uh, so I ran that for ten minutes. Do you think there is a secret alien ship coming, based on what we talked about just before? And sixty eight percent said yes. So I don't know what to make of that. What, what do you guys make of that? I think that's a yes, yeah. Just uh, uh, as in as a community, it's a yes, yeah. 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 At some point, we'll definitely get something unannounced. Mm. Uh, I just don't think it's going to be this week. That's my two penis. I, I'm hoping it is. I, I, CIG never misses an opportunity to sell you something. Yeah. And this is one of the four opportunities of the year, the big opportunities of the year. So I'm just, and the big one for alien ships. Yep. So Agreed. I, if anything, this would have dropped a concept of a, like another, you know, speeder bike or, you know, hover quad, whatever it was going to be. Um, I'm, I'm pretty shocked that we don't have it already, to be honest. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. Um, that just went up to 70% as I closed it. Um, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Like, it is the front and center. If you're going to do an alien ship, this is a place to do it. To give you a little bit of proof uh, badges that may convince you, this is where the Raylian came out last year. You know, it was front and center at Alien Week. Bang. Right there in your face. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm wondering if it's a PR thing to kind of spread it out a little bit by putting it at the end of the week or... You know, or or at the midweek or something like that. So so they, it just gives the the non new ships a little bit of time to breathe. Um, so yeah, we'll see. What the well, hell? With the How whole... does, hang on. How does that work? The poll says yes, seventy percent. No, twenty nine percent. There's a margin of error of one percent. What? Anyway, oh, sorry, <laughs> that confuses the shit out of me. Sorry, go go ahead. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. No, th- through the week, we tend to get, um, well, actually, usually it's the beginning of the week, but we've seen it before where they've done transmissions. You know, like we have the band new transmission for this alien week so far. Um, I could easily see like another transmission coming out. And when you decode it, it says there's a new ship from the you know, the Xeon Empire or whatever it's going to be. Gatak has another speeder coming out. So I, I, I don't think that the door is closed for the sale, but or for this week, but definitely... You know, I'm pretty shocked we already haven't heard something. I think he, Was it not the Xi'an letter I, I, yeah. that we've already got? Yeah, I think he could be onto something. That means it's not the Zion. It could be the Banu or Tavaran. Dun, dun, dun. That makes a lot of... If we get another letter from another race, I'd put betting money on it, right? So if they come out with something from the Tavaran, I'd put betting money on it. The Banu are going to have another ship. Well, in the Tavar sense, because you have the, you know, we're getting the, those skins. If there's only uh, two Tavaran ships. Yep. You know, but it would just be. 
I'll counteract that with that the Banu are currently being worked on. So if they're making the Defender, making another ship alongside that, we know they like to do that. Yeah, I just, I wonder if they mm. would compete with the Banu and the... No, yeah, because, because, the only... because one's, one's a concept, one will be straight to flight ready. So by the time the Banu Merchant Man comes out, and, and that's smaller, it could be finished sooner or after. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. Well, I think we're also missing something that does what the original concept Banu Merchantman was, the mm -hmm. sort of 100 meter long blockade runner. Because you ain't doing that at Banu Merchantman that's, now. That thing's... That's the Raelian. That is 100% what the Raelian is. The Raelian is the re replacement from the Merchantman. Um, it, it, again, it does the smuggling and all that type of stuff because it's brute force. Um, it, that, that That is very clear to me and um, Paul and, and, and our grid. We've talked about that to the cows come home. Um, is but definitely... it's not Banu. No, it's not. Mm, okay, I could see your argument for there, but I, I'm thinking more of like from the entire game standpoint. They they lost that, you know, the Merchant Clipper blockade runner, and so they've now replaced it with a Zion version, right? Um, I, I don't think it really the manufacturer matters so much, so to speak, or the race. It's just that, that they have one there in that category, um, and because that moved up. Um, and it is no longer a smuggling ship, so to speak. Um, they, that's what the Raelian is. 100%. When you go look at it, it's 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 over-defended. It's got way more people. That, like, it does the same thing almost as a whole B, but it's got four people. That, that tells you it's all about distance and, and, and getting through and defenses and stuff like that because you want those people on the turrets and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Right. So, here's a question. Mm-hmm. I have a question my, uh, from this group and actually from anybody uh, watching. Mm -hmm. The original concept of the BMM was really controversial. There was the whole space whale thing because they didn't know which was the side was the front or the back. Mm -hmm. But the original concept had it being very, like the front of it was very pointy. It looked far more, I don't want to say aggressive. It just had a different des like design quality to it. Was, it. it I, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about what was like a lot more mechanized. You're talking about that one where it's coming down the land, like one of the very first, like, um, I know what you're talking about, yeah. It was a lot more mechanized and it looked a lot more, um, it actually looked more Vandal. Um, it, yeah, the front was actually pointed, like it had two plates on the top mm. that came to a point that almost like looked like they could stab something. Um, what does everybody think about where the Banu's ended up? Like it, it's had a huge, or the, sorry, the Merchant Man has ended up, it's had a huge mm. slow kind of transition or or i don't know even what to call it just an evolution or or That's growth what it is. it's it, it's it's r d and as, as they've worked on it, it it's morphed and, and and as i said like earlier when i was talking about you you and i were talking about the uh the you know the merchants of uh yemen and middle east and stuff like that it's obviously evolved um you know and um it didn't used to be a, it's also got things like the leviathan from farscape which is the the, the living ship it's a, those elements have been brought in and stuff like that it's completely different i think just that original concept was just that it was a concept so i think it's got a lot more personality yeah someone else said that too look i like more gothic i think it's also oh, too personality. much i think it was also far too close to van Dill and telling them apart was different each race needs its own aesthetic i think mm. it's what cig realized that's a good point. Yeah, that, that is true. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to flick over to the game now. Oh, I have my Scorpius. I had to give it away. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to fly this week. But uh, Badgers, can you give us the next question, please, mate? Uh, yeah, Blamsmith asks, Have you guys seen a Javelin Lego model that Level Cap is working on? Oh, really? Hmm. No. No. Is my answer? <laughs> but he nope. would, because he has one. <laughs> Yes. I don't know. I think someone will have to come out with a merchant man now. I don't, I don't know how you pull <laughs> that off with all the curvy pieces, but yeah. 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 I don't know. I, actually, I kind, um, of, I kind of sit there and think I don't know what ship you build out of Lego, to be honest with you. Yeah. Nomad would work, so, actually. That would work pretty The well. next question is not for X, it's for everyone else. Uh, oh. Looking to make the Perseus my flagship, I'm wondering your opinions on it. And do you see the ship growing in size with it being more expensive than the Bunny Merchantman? Uh, I, I think we all agree it's not going to stay that way. It's not going to stay more expensive. What, what's not going to stay? Uh, more, I, sorry? Sorry. I don't think the Perseus is going to go growing to the size of a Bunny Merchantman. It just doesn't suit the lore of the ship. I think the no. problem with the Perseus is you're paying a horrendous tax for what that ship should be capable of in game based on the lore. 
Mm -hmm. The problem is right now we don't have any of the systems to back that up. And, and that's, we're not going to know until that, it's in game. That's the only reason they shit on it. Is its price? Its prices, and, 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 and Badgers will tell you that if, if he's if he's truly honest, he, he will tell you the only reason I shit on it is it's too expensive. Not 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 that I think it's a shit ship. Actually, I think it's quite a good ship. There's a whole video of me and Badgers did on it. I was wrong about this ship, right? It is a good ship. There are some really unique things about it, and I can see why Badgers likes it. But at the end of the day, Badgers will agree with you. It's probably double the price it should be. Yes, Badgers. Well, I mean, here here here's here's the honest truth on the price. Is just, no matter how much I jump in one, I don't own one. Yeah, because I find it too expensive. Mm. Um, but but having said that, that aside, if you've got the money for one, great. Um, and do you see it in growing size? And no, I don't. It's definitely paying a capital ship. Oh, so it's definitely paying a combat ship tax. Yeah, and then um, some... to own that one, um, uh... I think there is potential that it might get some sort of medical facility, low, very low tier medical facility. Um, if they keep up their current intentions, mm. they're gonna um, put a med. Yeah. They're gonna put a med kit in the mess hall on the wall. That'll be it. That's all you get. Yeah. Um, I can't see a medical bed in a Perseus. It just doesn't seem to fit nah, in with how I envision the ship being used. I agree. But I will admit, if you, for the love of God, if you're gonna buy a Perseus, please CCU chain the ever-loving bejesus out of it. It is not worth mm -hmm. the sticker price that CIG want. Mm. This no. is very so, quickly I mean, coming into one of those debates we have when we're when we're brainstorming. I can hear all the yeah. the different things coming. In. Oh, I mean, the, the, the key being that warships, even you know, because when people first asked the question, I said no, absolutely not, and it doesn't need it because you know warships that have people who need surgery, they don't. It doesn't happen on warships, frigates and destroyers. Unless it's immediate life-saving, don't do that. You're transferred to a, to a hospital ship. You're transferred mm. to a capital ship, something with bigger... That, that's geared for that, right? Normal ships don't have surgeons on them. Mm. Um, so, but having said that, having seen what Tier 3 injuries are, a, a frigate can certainly deal with a Tier 3 injury. So that's the only reason I might have I might have swung around a little bit on th my thinking on that is I can absolutely see that a frigate would be able to deal with a tier three injury and it wouldn't make sense for them not to be able to. So, but yeah, um, we're gonna have the... as your flagship. Good fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Next question, please. Um, Aurelius Indomitus asks. Uh, I will play with the Bunny Merchantmen and Orion when live, but they are expensive ships to manage. What will be the best uh, to make money before using them? Prospector or the Radiant? Oh. Well, that just comes Prospector? down to your personal tastes. Like, do you want a mine or cargo run? I, yeah. I, yeah, and, and, and I'd also argue because the Prospector is so much smaller than the Raelian, you'd probably earn money at a faster rate with the Raelian. That's not a fair comparison, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Um, you also need to have some money to front to buy cargo for the Raelian to make money. Yep. Prospector, you just go hunting for something and mine it. Yeah. Even if it's not that expensive, that's true you're still well. making money because you started with nothing. Hmm. As long as you cover your fuel, that's profit. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You know, if you're playing with friends as well, you might... Yeah. I don't know. That, that's a tough one because the Prospector's solo. The Raelian's technically a multi-crew, so... Yeah, I can't answer that in all that more info, essentially. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that could be the chain, right? The Prospector gives you money to do the Raelian. Um, the one thing I will say with the trading is once the system goes live, to make tra to really kind of min-max your trading, you're going to have to be watching the markets a lot. Yeah. Um, but different changes in price and, and all that sort of stuff. So that's going to be an added level of attention and information you're going to have to gather that you might not want to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, Bonfigs asks, hey, just watch your Alien Week video. Uh, I have a question on the BMM. Does it come with a Defender? Uh, and I answered that before and said, no, it doesn't. Just only no, it doesn't. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. Uh, Zenstrata says, when a Titan suit's for sale? Uh, when they... <laughs> Soon, God, TM? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I... <sighs> Actually, the person I ask here is SA, because SA has does a lot of speculation about um, theaters of war, and I think they're probably going to come in line with theaters of war. What about USA? Uh, how how would you? I could ask your opinion, but I can ask out of the 
I say? He's not here. He's been great. Okay. Uh, did anyone else want to have a stab at that? Like when, when they think Titans fits for uh, becoming? I'm going to put it out there. I don't think we'll see them until they're at least in Squadron 42. And that's a while away. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. That probably makes the most sense to me as well. The last I heard any type of info I've heard is the only Titan suit that exists is a boss in Squadron 42. There is that they haven't done any more than that one person, and that's it. That was all okay. I've heard, so yeah. Mm. Alright, next question. Okie dokie. Um, Aurelius Indomitus asks, uh, what if it will be difficult to earn the Defender in-game when live? I assume this is referring to, mm. because it's Banu, you might need to build the rep with them. It might be rep gated. Yeah, I think it's more along... It, it may... Yeah, but they're also a trading partner with with humans and it's a human version so i don't think it's going to be as bad as people think um mm -hmm. i think like quite honestly i think a Speria will be rarer than banu i think you'll have to build up the rep but again if you have to get to level two or three to buy a, mm. a defender just think how many levels you're going to have to get through to buy a banu merchant as an earning game yeah the banu <laughs> as i said i think the banu is Banner endgame essentially you know you get it that, that'll be the last thing they'll let you buy type of thing so yeah mm. oh man i want to do a spec i really want to do a speculation episode in my head and i know oh what oh cog i just i just got 30k um wow uh i want to do a, a speculation episode on what this alien ship could be but i've got nothing I've got absolutely nothing to go on so <laughs> I'm just sitting here going, I want, um, okay. I think I've also got a, um, damn it. I'm going to have to get rid of it. Sorry, I've got to switch back to. Damn it, Janet. Yeah. Um, you there, I say? I mean, I... What's that? Um, do, do, do you, we were talking about, um, what were we talking about? Uh, Titan suits. Titan suits. What's your thoughts on Titan suits and theaters of war? Do you think they'll come out similar <laughs> You reckon that's when they'll come, or where do you think we'll see Titan suits? Just real quick. So, yes, I have thoughts. Um, so, bottom line is because we are actually recreating actual battles in lore, they have to be there. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all tactical um, vehicles that would be in that conflict would need to be present for it to be within lore. Now, granted, yeah, we're, we're alpha. I get it. It doesn't have to entirely match. They can you know, recon anything they want to. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, I they would be kind of a co-launch now one of the really interesting things is why haven't cig sold them yet that is a huge question they sell concepts of everything why we know they've been in development we know they have the concepts fleshed out why have they sold them i don't and think, i think that it's a i don't think they have concepted them i just don't think they have concepted them oh you know um I mean, they have art. they've they've concepted them out as a titan suit i i think my personal belief, and granted, I've can you, almost zero. Can, can you show me any art that's just not the standard military one? Because I haven't seen any art other than the guy that's kind of got that lightning gun. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm on the phone right now, so I can't actually point mm -hmm. anything up and send it to you. There is additional art of different styles of suits that were concept okay. pieces. That being said, mm -hmm. we've seen nothing, and we know that they would sell like hockey. So why is he uh, G holding back on this? So my, yeah, so to answer your, your question in a short answer, yes, I think Titan suits are gonna be directly related to theaters of war. I think we're gonna see them. I think we're also gonna see some, obviously some new weapons, new armor. Um, I think everything we've gotten, the steel, uh, which is a piece of junk, but still clearly has purpose, mm -hmm. the different breakdowns of inventory, um, so that, you know, we actually have to pack inventory for different weapons, um, different grenades, etc. And the, uh, not the list, the, the Atlas platform. Mm. That all to me, 100%, like, Theaters of War is, yeah. they, they are literally probably waiting to release it. And when they do, you know, it's going to be basically a drop, my guess, of the first look at Titan suits. The real question I have is, um, and, and this is just me, pure speculation, crazy town. Um, I would love to see an alien Titan suit. I would love to see, see a Tavaran yeah, Titan I, I, suit that is a... I, I think that could be a thing. I, I, I don't think, think anyone here would... Um, like, so, so the way I would look at it, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong here, is like, 
we've appropriated some of their ships, they've appropriated some of ours, so we know the whole series are being made in Zion space. So why that, you know, oh, oh they're wearing a tight suit. Oh, yeah, we'll make our own. I could totally see that. What, yeah, if, what, that what, we... if, what if Titan suits didn't even come from us? We stole them from the yes. Devarin. Yeah, exactly. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what if That's kind of cool. Devar version of it, but like, like the Tavarin, it's basically just like a frame. Like you can mm. see the operator in the suit. Mm. It doesn't have any armor. Yeah. What it has is flight shields. And it's got to have a massive mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks like it basically looks like a chicken, right? Yeah, it's just like a, a walking big ma chicken mascot. <laughs> I like the concept you're selling, Essie, but I think the only thing I would say that goes against that is the UEE surely would have wiped them out post uh, diff Second Tavaran War. Yeah, they but, but uh, don't, don't. Okay, so right off the bat, never ever use law to shut something down because they'll just change the law. If, we have if, the if talent and yeah so it's just a matter of like here's a recreation you can have for your security force it features like it would be really cool if the human ones were like heavy armor beasts and the tavaran ones were like they had jump jets or the ability to like you know go into the air and like a you know quote unquote bird attack mm. from the sky they, they only used you know a like a titan suit tavaran yes. version hey yep. that, yeah <laughs> there we go yeah but i'm on board with sorry i was having the moment of but the Tavaran don't have ships. How do we make Tavaran Asperia? I understand. But like, yeah, I would I love to see that. It, it lets them get really creative with PvP because you could see somebody with like a, a more, a faster Tavaran style suit with shields going up against like a heavier armor one and just staying behind it and just killing it. Like it gives you these dynamics of who has what type of technology, mm -hmm. how are they using it? Um, you know, very similar, like, in, in X and I play this quite a bit, but Hunt Showdown, mm. very similar to, like, there's no master build-out, and one thing will always trump whatever you have in your hand. It's just a matter of who's using it and how, how good they are at it. Yep. So, you know, I would love to see that type of dynamic in PvP. Um, yeah, but getting back to your whole point as far as Titan suits, I think they're probably very far along in their concepts of Titan suits. I think they may... I, I think they're probably in Grey Box... Um, you know, they're definitely in white box, probably in gray box, and they're looking at an opportunity because those are going to be, those are, you know, what is, what was the talk originally? 110? If I remember, was that the, what, sorry, I'm, 110, I'm pulling what, $110 or 110 what? Yeah, US dollars. When it came out, concept. Wasn't it like 110 bucks? I'm so, so I'm doing what Shampasta is saying. Execute does a great job of talking without moving his lips. Uh, yeah. I'm a ventriloquist, man. <laughs> It's, it's actually got his it. actually he's actually got his hand right up my ass. That's what it is. No. <laughs> anyway, I'm just a puppet. Um, yeah, I no, I can I can see the the the, the tight suits coming. But what do you mean by 110? Sorry, I got distracted. I don't know. So what I was saying is that if the if the no if the tonk was 110 dollars a concept, mm. um, I could, if they brought out tight suit and priced it at 125, they'd probably get it. Yeah, I, I reckon, and I reckon people will buy them, but I do think slowly people are coming around to this whole in-game thing, so I have to wait and see. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, I went hang off on, the oh, Hang on, I have to yell at someone. Sorry, just telling someone to piss off. Um, so, yeah. Um, right, what was I doing? Sorry, okay. I'm now totally lost because someone was knocking on my door. What was the question? The I think, the I think, the I think we've gone to the next one for Badger. I think we've kicked the tits out of it. All right, next um, one. So, uh, Windlord asks, do we have confirmation that the med bed is tier two, or could it be an end game res point? What was it? Up, I think it will be at least a tier two because they've said it's at least com comparable. It mm. may be a tier one, but we don't. CIG have not talked about tier one medical outside of the Apollo and the Endeavor Hope. I, I can make it really... What 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 be, what be bear do you want it to be? Do you want it to be Tier 3 or do you want it to be Tier 2? Because uh, whatever I say, CIG... So red, it'll be sucky. Yeah, what, what, whatever I say, CIG will do the opposite. So I'll just like... Uh, yeah, make it at least equal to the 890 jump. Uh, and that means they'll make it a Tier 3. Or if I go... But, <laughs> 
<laughs> do you um, mean like they, that's like they swear they look at shit I say and just say do the opposite? But no, but honestly, I'd be expecting the eight ninety jump. I'd be equivalent so, to the eight ninety jump. So I'd I'd say a tier two. Unpopular opinion. Um, I hate the idea of ships having the ability to have respawns. Yeah. Um, I think it's utterly game breaking. I mean, the javelin, for example, eighty people on that ship. Let's say with your cloned data, you can respawn maybe five times before you need to go back to a station and upload more or do something to replace it. Mm. I mean, that basically means to board that ship and capture it, you've got to kill everyone on it five times. 400 players you've got to kill. Well, don't they? I mean, Just like... So broken. No, you're you're 100% right. I, I don't think that they should have tier one on any ship. Isn't there... Sorry, um, I've got to ask, though. Isn't there a speed limit to how quickly you can respawn people, though? Yes. Yeah. So it has to tier... basically print the entire body. Yeah. For a tier one. They need to separate... They need to do what Galaxies did and separate out cloning from mm -hmm. medical... So, like, if you die, like, let's say your body is not recoverable, you mm -hmm. die, you clone... You go back to a station at best, if not a planet, to be done in an advanced facility mm. to grow your body. Um, if you die and your body can be recovered, to me, that should be the tier two bed. The tier two bed should be the, you've died, but we have the technology to be able, since we recovered your body, and it's not past a certain you know clock or timer, mm. we have the ability to revive you. Yeah. Um, that, to me, is what we need. And yes, I could see a javelin's, like, you know, Five people doing nothing but dragging bodies, throwing them on a table, reviving them. It's, you know, they get off handing them a gun and be like, "All right, go fight in the hallways." Mm. Like that's going to be a thing if they have any type of revive type of function. Yeah, I see your logic, but I do think again, I can also look at it from a design perspective. If you just have a time limit on it, that removes a lot of it because, like, what you're saying about a hundred people, but if a hundred people are dead and it takes X amount of time to print one body, you're just not going to have, they're not coming back onto the ship as fast as they're dying, is what I'm trying to say. As long as you've got that. A hundred people are five people are five minutes per person. Yeah. That's 500 minutes. That's, yeah, I don't not, know what that is when you work out in hours, but it's crazy high. From yeah, a from a gameplay perspective though, you're never going to get away with making players wait 500 minutes to respawn. Exactly. So they're not going to wait that long. That's that's what we're trying to say. Yeah. So, um... Well, that's choice. Like, again, using another game's example, but like in Hunt, you have to make the choice. Do you tap out or, you know, and, and choose to play another match or do you wait to see if yeah. your teammates can so get you, you Yeah, so in this case, well, if you I mean, tap you, out... You've got that now, right? Hang on. So in this case, if you tap out, you go back to a space station. If you wait, you get you stay in line for a bed. There you go. Yes. Player's choice. Yeah. So maybe five people at best can wait for that one bed. You know, where everyone else is going to have to, you know, fly back in their own ship or whatever. And if there's no stay station in the entire system, yeah, play a choice. Well, I mean, but that's a real, to me, I want, I want gameplay with consequences, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, we, we, it, it, it will have consequences, but we're now getting into the weeds. So I'm going to move on because, because we're repeating <laughs> ourselves. We are repeat. If you want to keep talking about it, I'll talk about it with you after. But we're yep. getting into the weeds now and we've, we've repeated it three times already. So, next question. Well, we also missed a question. Oh, please, next Sorry. question. Um, yeah, we did, um, but it's hangar looks like it can fit a harbinger, which A, isn't the question, um, and B, yeah, I mean, we can speculate on what it's going to fit. Does anyone it's know? It's straight up no. What was it? Precisely what the size of the hangar is. On the Banner Merchantman, it's not going to fit a harbinger because that's a small ship. Yeah, it's, um, it, it, it only, um, yeah, it's a small, uh, tiny, isn't it tiny? Where um, the the eight ninety jump is extra Thanks. small, yeah. So um, the banner merchantman, because it's a defender, is a, that's an extra small ship. Yeah. The, the Polaris is extra small. The Odyssey is extra small. So far, CIG have not given yeah. us a, with a small hangar. So, so the problem the problem with the, with the hangars they have internal names and external names. So basically, if you look at the size of the ship that a defender lands on, which is what I classify as a small. You'll only be able to have other small. So, what was the ship that he was mentioning? The Vanguard, is it? What, is it what yeah. was? Yeah. So the yeah, Vanguard, the Vanguard is a medium to me, and yeah. So therefore, a Vanguard won't let, won't be able to fit. Yeah. It might be able to physically fit, but it won't have the services to uh, support mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, apologies, Strasbeck, but we've kind of already got around your question, which is the, what do you think the BM um, price will be by IAE or whatever? I think we're just speculating around the houses on that one. 
750 to 1,000. Um, Short Unreleased, yeah. Yeah, short answer. Unreleased, yeah, yeah but by IAE, yeah. Oh! Okay, so you just stacked it, didn't you? No. Um, no, nothing to see here. Uh, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. I'm watching you crash. Oh! Wow. <laughs> um, this is okay, why I don't find the little fighters. Anyway. You, you, you won't live stream so we can't make fun of you in real time. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's fine. Gallant Striker says Liberator <laughs> or Bunny Marchman for cargo, equipment modules, and vehicle movement around the vast. Curious if operating costs for the Bunny Marchman would make it worse than the Liberator. I would have to go apples and oranges with that. You're comparing yeah. very, very different chips. And and the Bunny Marchman is not designed for it. Can, can I have the question Agreed. again? Because I was distracted. What was the question again? Sorry. Well, the yeah, two, just, so just, the, just the two ships. Just the two ships. Uh, Bunny Marchman, Liberator. What? I don't even say ballpark. Yeah. Yep. I no, I mean, I, I get where he's coming from. It's like, which one is going to be more effective for a, an org fleet? But I mean, coming from a background of both civilian logistics and military logistics, uh, they're just completely different roles. And we could have a, another conversation on it at some point. You're welcome to reach out to me. I'll, I'll explain why. But it, it's just. It's a long conversation, and they're just completely different in what they what they can do. That's the short answer, in my from my perspective. I think Both the other ships, but they're uh, was, not comparable. Oh, so the only way I'd compare them is value. And if you can get, um, sorry, a two hundred fifty dollar banner merchantman, like at the original price, it's a no brainer. You know, it's already cheaper than the Liberator. But uh, sorry, uh, can you want to say? I think they're both good ships, but they do totally different things that are just not comparable. Yes. Yep. There are even like little details that we haven't even gotten into as far as game mechanics go, which is, which we've seen a hit recently in Spectrum from one of the devs. I don't remember the name, but logistics as far as loading and unloading, they're completely different beasts. Mm -hmm. They have different abilities, different capabilities, and the ability to actually transport vehicles and ships effectively and easily makes Liberator very uniquely positioned. But like Badgers has said from the beginning, and he and I agree 100 percent on this. And he's a Navy guy, so you know, I mean, I, I was waiting to hear what his opinion was on it before I made my final opinion. They're transports. Um, liberators are transports. They 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 are ship transports. Um, anything else you do with it is just creativity. Do you have a mic, Miss? Hey, um, hey, I'm okay. talking to you. Hey, don't be rude. I'm talking well, to you. Whilst X is uh, on the pull in Hurston, um, or on Hurston rather, in Melville, uh, we have. <laughs> oh, that's just rude! Uh, Windlaw asks uh, Since they keep improving their ships, what is the cutoff for reworking older ships to appease those bitter about their old ships being outside, outshone, specifically 890 jump, uh, 600i, etc.? Just, just wave, you're on a live stream. Just wave. Oh yeah, now you talk. Now I mentioned live stream and you start actually talking to me. Yeah, 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 crazy. Right, anyway, sorry. I, I was gonna... I, I, was, I, I was actually hitting the, uh, push button, like, every time. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I think there's... Say. I think it depends. We know the 600i is getting a rework right now. I yep. don't think the 890 is going to get one anytime soon. I think there's older ships that are going to need it more than the 890 jump. 890 jump has physicalized components. I think that's going to be the big driver for CIG. When we go to uh. physicalized armor and physicalized components, a lot of the really old ships, Connie being one that comes to my mind, they don't work. The components don't fit and various other things. They'll need to be fixed first mm. yeah. just to work with the new systems. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's a great point with the 890. I didn't think about that. I mean, my personal view of the 890 is that there's so few of them in the verse compared to other ships. I mean, I know there are a lot of them, but... You know, at that price point and the amount of work that's required and the fact that it currently functions in the role it was designed to do, I, I just see it being the last in the pipeline for a rework. Yeah, yeah well, what, it, it, what, what, I'll come back to the whole it's already in game. You know? I, I, yeah. And yeah, what, 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 what game, and what game play is needed or what anything can be done by reworking it at this point. It's kind of like the Constellation. Like, like it's in game, it works there's nothing that's going to add, add that we can't get somewhere else. So yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, sorry, uh, Badgers. Uh, and I think the key to that is, you know, when we say about being outshone, what, 
because the Banning Regiment's a, a better looking ship. Because, you know, I, I think we kind of discussed a little bit about how the 890 jump, the Banning Regiment just can't be used for VIP stuff because if you've only got four paying customers, yeah. it's not going to offset the cost of operating something that big. Um, you know, and, and CIG will, will have to build it that way because otherwise you just you completely invalidate most of their ships and like they've said all along the design philosophy is that there is no clear-cut answer as to what ship you use um there's always going to be strengths and weaknesses um so yeah i think 890 jump um 600i the 600i as can said is getting a rework yep. um 890 jump i think for vip if you're going to do vip or bunny once we get that gameplay it's going to be that's where the rework yeah. will come but yep. he, he's exactly right. Windlord says uh, most people get too upset, upset about the shininess rather than functionality. Yes, especially when the functionality is not in game and we don't know what it even looks yeah. like. So we've got no frame of reference. But yeah, you're entirely right. No, um, I all agree. I would say to 890 and 600Is is if up until now you've been absolutely adamant about that ship, you know, just think twice. I'm not saying don't. I'm saying think twice before you do it because we don't know what your gameplay looks like. Um, you know, don't. It would be a shame to do something now that you regret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, just now versus release. I keep saying it. Yes. And, and I, I'm going to be honest. Like the other way you could look at it is an extreme inverse of that in a way where I've had to wait nine years for a banner matchman. But can you imagine if they'd popped out a banner matchman five years ago and it was just some kind of weird awkward? <laughs> can you imagine what that would have been? Right. So even yeah. if and, and and say that's like that. <laughs> That's like that now with the 890 jump. At least in a couple of mm. years' time, they may do an update and a rework and fix it. Or the same thing with 600 eyes. So, yes. Yeah. Um, just to clear up in chat, Listic. Um, yes, there was a there was a guest bedroom, and they started talking about you know for the delegates to go and kind of clean up and freshen up before they go into the meeting in the mediation room. Um, so there are those areas there isn't a separate like captain's quarters or anything the crew will sleep in a communal space um because that's how the banu operate so yes there, there's a room with like a, a single bed and it's got um a desk with one high-sided chair one side two slightly smaller chairs facing it that's the guest quarters um the bed wasn't really too obvious because it's still in white box so um one thing for those who haven't followed the bmm's uh, development process is that and I don't know if this is still the case. Obviously, we're going to find out when it actually comes out. But there is a security type of protocol in the design of the ship where there's supposed to be a separate entrance for guests. And their ability to access certain areas is restricted off the design of the ship. So there are going to be choke points in the ship where somebody can't just come on board and walk anywhere they want to go. They'll be able to invite people on to negotiate and they'll be isolated to a guest area. No, no, I disagree. Okay, um, I did answer old boy's question, but I'll say it anyway because he's written it down. Maybe a dumb question. Will the merchantman be nameable? Yes, all ships will be nameable. Yep. Uh, soon, TM. Mm. Uh, Sean Solo says, if I counted right, it had nine beds in the crew quarters. I saw five positions on the bridge and one in the man turret. What do you think is the min-max crew range? Um, I also counted nine beds when the ship matrix said eight. Mm. I only saw four positions on the bridge, but because the the center one is not a standing position, just to make that clear. Yeah. This is like an observation bit. So four, five. Um, and then we have then got engineering, uh, medical. Engineer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've also got a a stump fight fighter pilot, possibly two crew for that. Yeah, because if it's the banner, it'll be two. Yeah. Again, this is the thing. Can you fly it with less than nine people? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be getting the maximum out of the ship? Depends what you're trying to do with it, really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. All right. So the Banu are into orgies. All right. Cool. Next question. Um. Well, you know, they're not completely stupid. Wait, what? Um. Okay. Okay. So, uh, next one up. Sean Solo again says, do you think the shops will have terminals for completing transactions? How do you think that will work if it if they don't? I, I, I think the terminals are the obvious choice, yeah. 
where they'd have to have some kind of mechanic mm-hmm. where you can set up your own terminal. Uh, man, the, the one I keep coming back to when it comes to cargo and um, and terminals and stuff is Eco. Any of you boys? I swear one of you guys. SA, did you play Eco with me? I played Eco with you. Yeah, okay. So you remember how we had to set up our shops and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that that's, makes sense to me. Yeah, something similar to that where you can go up to the terminal and yeah. because you're the shop owner, there's a button where you click it and then you can edit the what, what the customers see and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's a no-brainer. So for those not familiar with Eco, you have depots or storage areas that effectively you store stuff in it and your shop can see all of the storage areas you own, but you actually have to tell it which ones to look at. It then lists everything that's in that storage area. So this would be like a, a cargo grid in the cargo bay and you just tell it the prices. Um, well, CIG and... have talked that each store has its own distinct storage location with a yes. to-be-determined amount of STU storage for each individual shop, so Absolutely. I'd imagine it's going to be you physically put the mm. material in wherever that is, and then the terminal will do yes. something. Yes. I think there's going to be a little bit of space magic with this, because otherwise it's going to get really boring if you have to go and, as a player, physically hand people item by item. I mean, it'd be kind of cool if it just kind of appears on a, a, a little hatch. It just kind of comes out, and there's where, there's where the drones are going to be. The flying drones. My flying drones, that's what we're going to be. I, I, I think you could have it so there's a like some kind of shop drone that basically goes and picks it yeah. up from the thing and delivers it to the counter. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, they, they'll, they'll figure something Maybe that's out. what the gun's for. It just kind of slingshots it at you, and if you can catch it. Maybe it's as simple as the NPC that you hire to run the shop literally walks out the back and grabs it from the back and brings it out. Yes. It could be as complicated as that. Because that, that lines up with everything else, if you think about it. If it's unlugging mm-hmm. cargo from a ship, that how is that any different from taking cargo from a storage room out the back and bringing it out to the front counter? It's basically the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Aurelius Indomitus asks, um, he asked a question before about the Orion and the Bunny Merchant. So he said, yeah. uh, I'm in doubt now um, whether or not to keep the Orion um, because the Bunny Merchant looks like you'll be in it all the time. What do you guys think? When it comes down um, to the gameplay that you want. Um, yes. I, I think probably value-wise, as in dollar value, mm-hmm. the Bunny Merchant may well, well end up being... Well, that's a tough question because you've got six they're both roughly six hundred dollars now you know yeah. so um the orion is Wait. definitely bigger um yep. i think you will i'll come back to what uh kind of what, what can said about the prospector and the Raelian when we're talking about that it's the orion you can take the money directly out of the game um sorry i just sneezed um and um if i had to pick personally I'd take the Orion because it, because of the, the money you're going to extract out of the game. And I don't think the Orion sent its last price increase either. Um, but no, what, what do you guys think? I'll, I'll pass it off to you guys. Okay. Uh, I am ironically the opposite to X. I've probably just ditched one of my Orions to make it a Banu Merchantman. But that's also because of the type of gameplay I want to do is sort of trading it's not mining i do mining with my friends and i enjoy it but i don't want to be the guy trying to run and manage an orion mining op yeah it just comes with, it, it comes it, it comes back almost every single time to what you want to do in game every single time um but 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 if you're trying to ask us which is the better ship we can't answer that because we don't know what you want to do in game um yeah and, and if you're basing it purely based on a dollar value like that that re- essentially becomes which is the ship that become was cheaper and becomes more expensive it's got to be the banner merchantman so there's only two ways we can answer that um yeah i i would wait until they're both in game and that we know what their gameplay looks like um yeah. because obviously the rhyme is going to be a slightly different mining beast to the other two yeah um and see what you fancy it's it's all down to personal preference my dude but um yeah i don't um and someone just put it in chat actually as well and so i don't see them as uh, I agree with them. I don't see them as um, mutually exclusive. Yeah. So t- t- tell us, what what are the top three professions, Aurelius, that you want to do in um, in game? Like, if he comes out and says, oh, I want to be a medic, like, <laughs> neither of those ships work, you know what I mean? So just just tell us, um, Aurelius, what, uh, what profession, top three professions you want to do in game? 
and then, and then we'll, yeah. the we'll other thing is we'll you don't have to own every ship in the game you have friends you're gonna have to play, be playing with groups yeah you <laughs> you don't need to provide every ship for your group of seven or eight people to play mm. yep um yes absolutely all right next question we'll come back to um, the one of the, <laughs> i'm gonna drop especially seeing as essie's just walked in uh back in uh i am gonna drop this grenade and run like buggery um one uh says is the odyssey the true carrot killer <laughs> i expect really? nothing from a navy man <laughs> um, um, uh, i mean so, go on mate go for it all right so I, I have a different perspective i'm not a you know so badgers has a very unique perspective being a navy guy he understands the the purpose of vessels and what they do and how they operate better than probably anybody that I've met so far in the game. Mm. And when it comes down to, and it gets a little bit of naval surface warfare stuff because it's related, right? That's sort of where my expertise lies. So like, like adjacent to it. So the, when you look at the Odyssey, um, I personally think it's going to get a dramatic rework. I think it's going to potentially have the ability to be the civilian exploration surveyor that it's clearly meant to be. Um, and would it be a care killer? No, because the Carrick has a very different purpose. The Carrick is a cartography vessel. It's an exploration cartography vessel. It's, the, it's, it's there so that it can go forward and badgers by at any moment, just stop me if you think I'm wrong about this, because um, I believe you have enough conversations where we, we sort of agree on this at the point, at least, at least to my memory. But it, it's an exploration cartography vessel. It's not designed to uh, go out forever and never come back. It's not designed to make money. It's designed to go out into a system that has not, or, or to a jump point or wherever it's going to be, that hasn't been explored and explore it. It's not designed to have a, gr a good time. It's designed to survive. Um, the Odyssey, though, seems to be built for a very different purpose, which is more of a the concept was clearly a commercial purpose. I'm not sure why it got away from that. So my hope is that it goes back to that and gets the ability to do it, it, surveying and a bunch of other things that it can make money doing. It's called CIG marketing. CIG marketing had all this data that told them people are into explorers. Let's sell it as an explorer instead of an industrial ship. That, that's it in a nutshell. A, a, com a commercial survey exploration vessel is a real thing. Yeah, yeah, but what so, I'm saying is I'm talking about the marketing department. The marketing department didn't sell it as an... They wanted to sell it as an explorer because they thought they would sell more of them. That's why they did it that way. And they were wrong. Yeah. They were wrong. Because yeah. they, 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 they basically insulted the intelligence of this community uh, by doing so, in my, in my book. Because if they'd been truthful with us, we would have brought it. Because there are people that are into that. But they, they've done the math. It's like, oh, more people will be into explorers than they will be into industrial survey. And, and I guarantee you, there's a, like we are not dumb. We can see through and what these ships are, you know, with with analysis. And we're not the only ones doing it. There, there are multiple channels that analyze the shit of this stuff. Um, yeah. Yep. And, and I think they they underestimated just even the regular Joe Blow that's going to spend what was it six hundred plus dollars. He's going to look into that ship and want to know what it is before he spends his hard earned money. It's that simple. It was six fifty war bond. You could buy it for less than that, but the other thing was it oh, was sorry, the Q and A, the Q and A that launched a hundred refunds. The way they wrote that Q and A, I'm yeah. sorry, that's my opinion on that Q and A. Yeah, uh, just oh, yeah, just yeah. just one hundred. I think it was a lot more than a hundred, but okay. Um, I'm paraphrasing a famous <laughs> phrase. Yeah, I figured as much. Probably more like a million refunds because that was just. This is why the Carrick is a hundred dollars cheaper and better than this ship. Why am I spending seven hundred dollars on an Odyssey then? Mm. Give me my Carrick back, thank you, CIG. Yeah, and it's you know, so I own a Carrick. It's my favorite ship, my favorite ship to fly. Everything. Um, that being said, you know, the Odyssey has a place in the verse if they can figure it out, and you know, not reconcept so much, but just to tweak it into where it needs to be because we need that vessel. Mm. So yes. does it kill the Carrick? Jump point no. essay on it. The, the jump point actually made it sound 
like the original plan was for it to be more like what you're actually describing. Yeah. And if they'd actually delivered on that concept, I think they'd have sold tons of them instead of what they did deliver, which seemed like a confused mess where nobody was actually in control of what uh, it was supposed to be. Matt Badgers. Anytime yeah. SA or our group pisses us off, we put them in a room and then mention the Odyssey and then just leave. Um, and I think <laughs> <laughs> I think we, they'd be there for days. Well, days! I, you know, I've got to say, I, I, you know, SA is entirely right. We see eye to eye on this. Yes. Um, but, you know, my, my feeling is that it becomes the use case as it stands as an industrial ship, and I'll back that up, because I think they said it was a size one mining laser on the front of this thing. Size two, but yeah. Uh, size two, is it? Yep. Okay, so that's slightly better, but even so, anyone that's gone out and tried to mine the extremely high yield quantanium, quantanium rocks knows that size two will struggle with that. So I think a natural pairing a, with it's, its hangar would be a prospector to provide the extra power. Yeah, so so um, just to put that in perspective for you, the, the mole has three size two lasers. So it's the laser yes. from the mole, so technically more powerful than the prospector. Um, oh no, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, so it's more powerful than the prospector. What I mean is, what the prospector can do is provide a bit of an extra kick because right. one size two will struggle with the really high yield quantanium rocks, and that's what the refinery is after. Yeah. So it makes sense to me. You would pair that with a prospector. It's not its only use, but it it kind of makes sense that that's where you would go with it. But yeah, I, I, you're right. Um, the problem is, and you guys have said it, so I'll just sum it up in a sentence. The marketing around it has been confusing at yep. best. Yep. All right, next question, because um, otherwise we'll be here forever. Every time someone <laughs> asks the Odyssey, we spend like half an hour talking about it. Every, like we, It's probably the fifth or sixth time on stream we've talked about it. I'm, I'm just okay. getting a little Alistic says, the tool site has changed the BMAP banning management stats. Probably means nothing. What do you think of what they put up? Um, Listic, can you... We'll I'll, come back to that. I'll pull can it Can you up. just pop what the changes were? So what changed from what to what? So it's on the um, uh, ship matrix. Hang on, I'll just go there. We'll do it live. Let's do it. Um, the, the tools site, so... Is it oh, SC Star Citizen tools? tools? I thought it said the ship matrix. No. But if we can, because uh, we don't know what they were, so looking at the site, we won't be able to see what they were. Yeah. So yeah, if you could have a look a, that's that, also, Mystic, if that's, you're still here, buddy. That's also unofficial, so I can't. Uh... Um. Yeah. So someone said, sorry, uh, Antoine um, has said, uh, don't you think eight shops on the BMM is too much? I feel like there are too many stands for the potential use of the space. Unless there's a ton of NPC customers, I fail to see how well they will be used. Well, hopefully you will get a lot of NPC customers. Yeah. Because uh, it means more money for you. 90% of the universe is NPCs. I'd be really surprised if you didn't. I actually think most of the interactions yeah. we do on a daily basis will be with AI. Um, yeah. Um, you know, and I think in terms of the shops, looking at how... Not little space, that does the banning much wrong, but seeing how they're quite compact. Mm. One for armor one for weapons, one for utility stuff, one for civilian clothes, mm -hmm. one for food ship and drinks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. One for ship parts, one for mineable commodities, one for refined commodities, um, you know, one for rare stuff. I I think you can make use of that quite comfortably. Because, um, you know, bearing in mind, someone earlier on said that, well, hang on, there's only like four or five shops in a city. So yes, but they have a lot of space. And you'll find guns with utility items with armor. Um, I don't think you're going to have that space in each individual shop within the BMN. Can what do you reckon? I think the other thing to that we don't know at the moment is how much SEU each shop will have. If it's fifty yes. SEU, you need eight shops. If it's uh -huh. one hundred and fifty, it's a very different question. But right now, we don't know. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it also yeah, comes has down. A vision. I think it also we come, see what we get. I think it comes down to layout too. You got you got to look at how they want to lay things out in a ship. And let's be honest, a lot of ships, whether it's a submarine, a spaceship, whatever, they are essentially tubes, right? So if they were to put three shops, you'd have one centered and two off to the side. So therefore, you can't walk through that tube. So by by as soon as you go, you, you know, four, you, you, you can walk through the middle of it because it doesn't have the space. And because they wanted it to do double layered, I guess they could have had two up the top and two down the bottom and gone down to four. 
but maybe they they've got other plans for other shop ships that we don't know about like what we were talking about earlier i mean we haven't even gotten services in the game besides food yeah so there's what about weapon tuning what about a spa for the luxury sector like it's there are all kinds of things they could you know entertainment gaming like just a bar like there are things that potentially could be added into that dynamic of a quote unquote shop. That, that wasn't that wasn't me, by the way. Somebody else pulled up. Not my fault. <laughs> yeah, so when it comes down to like where they're going with shops, I think anything that can basically be done by a player and sold, either as a service or a product, mm. will be a quote unquote shop. Okay. Hmm. Alright. Yeah. Cool. Um Jason A says, who else is old enough to remember when we first saw the Buddy Matchman concept, uh, concepts <laughs> and it took CRG way too long to figure out which end was the front. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, that's terrifying. Yep. No, I mean, Not I was me. there. That's yeah. what I brought up earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was there too. So I can relate. I'm far too young and youthful to be one of those. So there's, there are actually images where the, the Buddy Matchman actually, the front was the back. And you can right. clearly tell because the image, there is a, a command deck in the image. And people freaked out. They were like, I don't want a space whale. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Oh, with a space whale initiated, to be honest with you. Anyway. Hmm. All right, next question, please. Okay. Mark Flat says, will repair facilities for the Bunny Merchman be restricted to locations in Banu space. What will CRG require for claiming a destroyed Banu Matchman? Good question. Well, yeah, that, that's a really good question because, uh, like, do they have to have materials come from Banu space to be able to recreate it, to rebuild it? I don't think they do recreate it, right? They're family-owned or solely owned mm. things. I think it has to be purchased by the insurer to give to you. Yeah, so it's probably so... going to be delivered from Banu space then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my guess is to, to get one back, it probably would take up to real world time a month. Mm. No, I think you're getting it's a bit such too a far. rare shit. Yeah, okay. No, there... so, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. So, in game time is drastically escalated over real world time. So, if it's in game a month time, that might only be a week, right? I'm just trying to. I'm, so I'm just trying to pop the pip there before people freak out. We said, "Why are you gonna wait a month?" I'm just trying to. Yeah, I'm just trying to stop that because people are going to freak out so again realistically well, look at some of the ships right now you got something like a redeemer that take i think the highest one was the um the reclaimer and that was an hour and they lowered it to 40 minutes right so i i i i think if you get on and you had oh i don't have to six hours maybe maybe if it was a you know the but, reason i think and this is again pure speculation is that what if you were in an 890 jump and you decided that you want to take out a javelin and you just rammed it you'd blow up the javelin right but there has to be some type of no i don't think you know, would actually i think i think the uh, i think uh, uh, an 890 jump would explode before the the javelin would well i think they both would be destroyed that's my point like the you want to reclaim that 890 jump um they you know and, and badgers probably knows a little more about shipyards than i do but it is not quick to build a big ship and I think that what we're going to see in replacement is whether or not a ship is is built to order. So like a Javelin, you might have a surplus one laying around that they could give you. But um, your third time losing one, there might not be any more to re to get. You'd have to you actually have to go sh shop for it. Same thing with the Nani Jump. I mean, they're a new ship, so it has to be built. So a CIG yeah. in the past did talk about the concept of certain ships you having to be invited to be given the opportunity to buy them the 890 jump was one of them mm. they are basically built to order and you have to pay for it and you will get it delivered to you much like real super yachts you pay it and eventually it will be built for you mm. so that's again I, I would think that's, just, take... that's just reputation that's a fancy way of saying it's behind a rep wall um, no this think... was this, they talked about rep being how you got invited to go there and then it would be an open bidding thing hmm no, I, I agree with you, X. It, it could be a week. It could be two weeks for a TNA 90 uh, jump. But uh, I think I think, you're, I, think I think you just need to be very careful what you say there because you will make certain people panic. Um, and I, I don't think it will... Uh, I, I will freely admit the bigger a ship gets, the longer it's going to be. But I, I would struggle... Like, you think about it realistically. I don't think... Like, even the bigger ship, like, let's say a Javelin, 
if you were making a player wait a month to get their ship back like you run that through and might like it could be a thing but i just i struggle i really 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 struggle I, I get it. I don't expect everybody to agree with me. I just think yeah. like when you talk about rare ships like Banu or like a Scythe, for example, right? Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> so, so I'll agree with you. It will definitely take longer. I'll give you that. But I don't think it's going to be as long as you like. Like a month is too long, especially when it's like like a defender, a defender because it's an alien ship with that alien tax. Maybe it. Co so what's the alien tax? Twenty percent. So it takes twenty percent longer. I'd say it lines up with its tax. Same thing with a, you know, a 400i. Its tax would probably be equivalent to its time. And and I actually think as a designer, that is how I would price the ships based on that. You know, on how long they take to get back. I think the other thing is CIG will figure this out once we get to the point where we're not losing ships to mm. random glitches. Time to kill yes. is actually representative yeah. and a whole bunch of other things. Right now... They have a concept. They'll see how that works out, and it'll be balanced when we get to beta. That's still a long way off, lads. Yeah. Wait, does this thing even have guns? Uh, are you there, Badges? I am indeed. Can we get the next question, please? Okay, okay. Uh, Embarkation asks, uh, uh, what level does the... Bunny merchant have to increase in price to instantly qualify for LTI. That's a grand, isn't it? Yeah, over one thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Is this real um, grey area between seven fifty or a thousand? That's just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And the only real ship it that does. falls in there is the uh, the Pioneer. Um, the Pioneer is a really outlander case. It. it it's, eight ninety as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, technically, technically now the eight ninety as well. Yeah, sorry. So good. I, I had a friend actually melt a Polaris because they had one without LTI and buy a token and mm -hmm. get, I think it was four ships total. <laughs> like, that's how bad the system is when it comes down to LTI if you really want it. Mm -hmm. um, my personal advice is I, I know LTI is just a thing, it's, it's bling. Um, before you buy a big ship, think about it because the insurance on larger ships will be more. Mm -hmm. So, LTI does have a value for larger ships. Yeah. So if you're CCU chaining a ship, you can build it in for zero cost. Mm -hmm. Free insurance is better than paying for insurance. And usually at a real world cash discount. So I'm walking away with four ships. Um, you know, three of them without LTI, one of them with LTI. I think he's... I don't remember what the token was at, at this point. The LTI token, but it was not a complicated process. And... You know, that's a significant savings. That's a lot more gameplay out the box that you don't have to worry about. That being said, CIG's also said LTI is not a requirement to get your hull back. If you've bought a ship with real world money, you'll get access to that ship to, re to replace it. Yep. They have said that as well. That is 100% true. All right, next question. Okay, Shem Pasta asks What benefits do we get when ships go up in price? Not like we can sell them? Question mark. I mean, um, real world or game? Well, it, it, it it's kind of a part of that speculation part. You know, you, you're just getting stuff for less. You know, I think there's been two ships that have been kind of like the Banner Merchant, it, it itself. And the other one would have been yes. when the interest went up. It went from, now I'm going to butcher this, it went from a Corvette to a Frigate or a Frigate to a Corvette, whatever. Um, but that, that was another one because that was originally under a thousand bucks and now it's like 1400. Yeah, uh, I think it was like eight hundred um, bucks or something back in the day. The benefit is you didn't Carrick pay that price well. for it. That's the benefit. Yeah, Carrick's another one. Hmm. Sorry, you were saying. Um, just... Yeah, I just say that the benefit is that you didn't pay that price for it. Yeah. You paid the lesser price. Um, you know, CIG are selling us ships, and there is obviously a CCU market they intend us to play for a little while, but this isn't the core of it. And, you know, they may be putting stuff up in price. There's not necessarily going to be a benefit to everyone for that over and above. You got it for cheaper. Um, All right, next question. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. Um, That's right. So, Mad Titan, uh, 
ah, right, okay. So when we were talking about the potential surprise ship, mm -hmm. uh, he says, I don't think a surprise is coming. A lot of people will look, see no new ship right now, and miss the sale. Um, don't you think CRG would uh, try to avoid that? Yeah, I think that's... Yeah. Essay, didn't you make that point? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but the one thing they do with any new ship they release, right? All of us get that email in the freaking inbox. Yep, that is true. Um, um, and I think we're, we're we are all concierge, aren't we? So we would have seen it. I know. I know I'll, if it was imminent. I'll be honest with you. That I wouldn't be surprised the dev stream is playing with it next week. So yeah. yeah. Welcome. So they're, they're um, pushing it on all fronts, as I'm trying to say. But what I mean, yeah, I, I think you know, I, I see Mad Titan's point though. I mean, that would have made sense to do that during Alien Week and not the week after, because that's daft. Yeah. Um. So yeah, get your point. Absolutely. Um. Omar Ohms says, uh, what are your thoughts on the Banu Defender? And do you think a medium-sized Banu ship? And that's the end of the question. So there you <laughs> just, go. Just, just like cut off in the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hang on, I'm, I'm going to try and go back and find that question and figure yeah. out if there's more to it. So what are your <laughs> thoughts on the Banu Defender, gents? Uh, as I said in the, the video this morning, it's just in a weird place because the, the dual function thing just isn't a thing. But like they've tried to make it this thing and it just doesn't make sense right now. And as I kind of pitched to um, Paul, I would have made it so it had a bespoke turret that had a singed tachyon cannon like a sniper rifle and that it can literally yep. go like full, you know, 360 degrees. And that's what it is. It's this, it, it's a sniper ship, you know. Um, but... Um. Yeah. Sorry, just to so the reason it did that is he retracted the question. He has repeated it. So the question is, what are your thoughts on the Banu Defender, and do you think we'll see a medium-sized Banu ship at the sale or in the future? Either or. I'm yes. assuming this is in the future. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. They gotta, they gotta travel in something besides merchant ships and yeah, and fighters, right? Mm. Yeah. I think we will see a medium-sized ship from a lot of races. Two, two, ships, actually... two ships from an entire civilization seems stupid. Like, look at our own civilization, yeah. and you kind Ooh. of break it down. We have cars, trucks, uh, and I'm talking sizes here, right? Um, we've got boats, and we've got planes. And then I think we, we could Ooh. also include spaceships. So minimum, if you put them in basic size categories, there's five. So, um, yeah. and I think you could safely kind of say, well, Star Citizen's done four, small, medium, large capital. Uh, I think you'd have to safely assume that you'd at least get, even if they make the best and only the best, and that's the mm -hmm. light fighter, I think you could safely assume there's at least two more coming for the Banner Moon at minimum. Um, you guys tell me if you disagree. Oh, no, no I, I think it would shame to be a shame to not see more Banner ships. And as for the Banner Defender, I mean, it's a fighter, so pick your flavor. Uh, some people are going to love it, some people are going to hate it. I will say right now the standard Singes Tachyon Cannons are in a really terrible place balance-wise. Yeah. And it's also suffering from the standard balance issue of a medium fighter. It's mm. not not fast enough and agile enough to not get hit and it doesn't have the hit points of the firepower to yeah, hit that, hard enough. That's a net and now thing too, they just nerfed them into the ground after how strong they were. They'll come back and yeah. rebalance them in another time and... I'm pretty sure they'll get something cool and anally, you know, bespoke to them eventually. Just at the moment, they were just way too strong, and they've kind of said they're taking them out. Um, wait and see. Uh, unfortunately. All right. For my take, the defender is a is a decent. I don't like the design of it personally. It's just not my aesthetic. It's again the the dual mm. seat gameplay isn't there x already said that yeah. but you know so it, it's an okay fighter it, it's got a very cool concept so it's in a unique place they just got to tune it all right so that being yeah. said um other band new ships i agree with x 100 percent. and you don't put that much work into the merchant man and the defender and just the aesthetics of them and just leave all those artistic assets on the table so yeah we're definitely getting more band new ships yeah mm -hmm. uh, even 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 if it's not until, say, an expansion pack comes out for the Banu. That's how far away it could be, right? They, they could literally be that arsenine about it that they do that. 
But yeah, at some point, there's definitely more Zion and stuff coming. And and if you think about it from a, uh, how do I put this? From a, well, let's just go from a marketing perspective then, I guess. Um, if you were going to do that, that would be the way you do it. Because you, you then have more ships to sell. And it's like, ooh, look at all these alien ships you can get in this expansion. You know, so, so I can see that as a, oh, a possible way. I'm not saying that is the way. I just picked that one as an example. All right, next question. Okay, Windlord asks, do you think there may be an option to upgrade medical beds through hiring an NPC doctor um, or other augments to ships? For example, a higher tier bed as a module in the carrick, et cetera. So hiring, hiring a better doctor gives better medical facilities? Is that the gist of that question? Uh, up, upgrades your medical facility. So if you had yeah. a tier two facility and a brilliant doctor you paid a ton of money to, mm. could they make it a tier one level capability? And no, you know, because it's like um, if I'm a baker and I have no baked pans, I can't make bread. I'm also going to say we know that you can modularly swap out the Apollo and the Endeavor to have different tiers of beds. So CIG already have that, so I don't think why they would basically I think, make those ships redundant by allowing you to fit tier one beds to anything and everything with a cargo bay. That doesn't make sense. Mm. Well, the so oh, we we talked about cargo modules and ships providing mm. certain things. I think that that's be very limited, though. I think we're talking about nothing quite as advanced let, as let, that. As let far me, as like a, let, me, let me put it in a way that we can actually very realistically work it out. Um, with your military backgrounds, the three of you, if someone is better than someone else, aren't they like just faster or more fit? They're not actually like like the, you, you give the same person the same gun, they can't go yeah. beyond the no. capabilities of the gun. Yeah. So I, I, I see what he's asking is so he's not saying will hiring better doctors upgrade it. What he's saying is, are there means to upgrade? For yeah, example, so it's just I mean. it's it's yeah. one part of it. So you know, because he also mentions uh, apologies, well, not I'm assuming he um, higher tier bed as a Carrick module, um, for example. So it'd be cool. I mean, yeah, I, I, I and and what's an upgrade? Like as I said, like again, you can't go beyond the facilities of the bed, but there's no reason. Yeah. Like for example, one doctor can't do it faster than another. That's what I think you're paying for. Because again, like coming back to that thing where we were talking about earlier about five minutes in a bed, really top level doctor might be able to do it in two and a half minutes. You know what I mean? So well, that, that, that would change the game. Yeah, sorry. No, no, I, I agree 100% with what we're saying. And I would add on to that, they could even do it with like, you know, they say slowly your body will degrade. So you'll be at like a certain point where you have to clone. You, they just can't replace a limb mm. anymore. You know, implants won't work. So yep. it could be that the doctor is just better at doing their job so he can he might be able to yeah he might be able to do it one more time than the other guy yep i totally agree with that because that's not within the form of the bed that is that, that he's just got better skills no i totally agree yeah yeah now they that also said, talked about that being a thing if you were in a tier one facility instead of a tier two bed or tier three bed that you yeah. might like, get more you might get i could see a higher level doctor giving you the results of a tier two bed but this, not because you uh, you you, you he's upgrading the bed, but because of his skill. Yep. So he could never do tier three things because that's cloning, or that's getting into really advanced stuff on a tier one bed. But I could see them basically making the mechanics so that that doctor gives you a better outcome where it could have been far worse where you lose an arm, you might be able to save the arm. All right, we're, we're, um, in, we're into the weeds now. So I'm going to cut it there. Because yeah. <laughs> this is highly speculatory, right? Because it's like, how long is a piece of string, right? It is it is literally, this is a wait and see thing. Right, hundred yeah. um, percent. So I've got to cut it off. There. I think, I think doing so complicates yeah. balance massively. Yeah, that's it, it'll, it'll all. Um, it, that, that's a really good way to end it. It'll all come back to balance. They want it balanced. They they want it to make sense. Uh, uh, you know, did it take him five years to learn that skill? Yeah, it, that's a really good way to end it. Badges. Yeah, really good. All right, next question, please. Um. So Lloyd Van den Boer says. Um, when do you expect the Liberator to come out? Do you expect it to change in design, possible med bay, increased number of beds, or increased size of front landing pad? Uh, me and Algrid answered this a couple of weeks ago, and we reckon it's around the same, the earliest you could possibly see it as Pyro, because of that's where the, yeah. its range is, and it, that's where the first time it's ever going to be needed. Uh, so, yeah. 
Unless you guys want to yeah. add to that, but I can't see any need. I think it'll be unknown. late. I think it'll be late, and I on the design changes, I think that's a flat up no, no, and a no. Agreed. Um, yeah, design um, changes. No. Agreed, because I, I, it's it, not a carrier; it's a ship shipping ship. The only reason we it's, brought it up too was because the Anvil—they're doing the Crucible and doing—they like to yeah. do multiple ships at the same time. So that's why we're oh, well, if they're doing the Crucible, they could be doing the Liberator. So yeah, earliest we could possibly see is what we said. We didn't say it was it; we just said the possible earliest. I think it was the question yeah. last time we answered it. Yeah, so yeah, right, sorry. You to know, it's, it's 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 designed to help you move house. So, into it, but instead of in the boxes, you've got plates and cutlery and your furniture, you've got your ships and your vehicles and, you know, the, the belongings that you have. Um, you don't need a medical bed for that. You don't need anything other than the pilot and the co-pilot for that. And, you know, I'm sure there'll be larger options to ship stuff around, but not the Liberator. That's not what it's for. So... Um, anyone else want to weigh in or should we move on? I'm going to be brain farting, I'm fighting. Cool. Move um, on. the canine music says, Does it make sense to pick up the Banu CCU if you've got the Corsair one at IAE? Um, I'm assuming he's talking about uh -huh. the Defender, and unless you're trying to complete multiple chains, probably not because you have to put fresh cash in to buy a Warp on CCU. Yeah, yeah I, 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 does, does, what he's yeah. asking is, does the CCU is it a CCU chain? Do, do they connect? That's what he's asking. Do they connect? Oh, can, so can someone work out if they connect? I can't do it right now. No, they don't the, connect. The, there you go. That's your answer. The defenders more than the Corsair. There you go. Is it, and if we're Which wrong on what you asked there, man, re-ask the question with more context, please. Um, because I know how confusing that shit can get. That that's a new person asking if he can save money. I can hear that in the in the way it was yeah. asked. Yeah. Um, no worries, Lloyd. No worries, Lloyd. You're very welcome, my friend. Um, Zen Strata uh, asks, are there plans for insurance on personal items that we have purchased, such as weapons and armors? Uh, yes. Yeah, we don't know what did. those plans are yet. Um, but if you look at anything in the Q&A and the known bug section about how you have to reset your character to get anything back that you've lost in terms of stuff you've bought, it makes reference to we haven't figured out how we're going to do that yet so character reset instead so worst case scenario it's going to be like galaxies where you just go up to a terminal it tells you how much to, with everything that's on your body you pay it and you go you know you're insured until you die yeah. worst case yeah yep um, but yeah, I, CIG have said a number of occasions, correct me if I'm wrong, fellas, that you're not going to lose stuff that you've paid for. It yep. might not be as available as everything else. Uh, it, it's going so. it, to, it, like, the, the most logical way to work this out is it's just going to be an increased timer. So, yeah. uh, so, so another way to look at LTI, versus, so, so maybe it takes four days to get it back without LTI and it takes two days to get it back with LTI. That's the simplest way to look at it. And, it. and that's just an example. It could be different. The scales could change on that, obviously. But I'm just trying to give you a rough example. It'll just be more time rather than less. Yeah. Yeah. E even in things point out, um, this is only stuff that you purchase with real world yes. cash, not things you buy in game. Not just that. Yeah, in, in game so is yeah, in game is different. You you will lose that completely, but it's anything you paid cash for. Yeah, that's a really important uh distinction. Yeah, sorry. But um, it's more than anything you pay cash for because they've also said in uh, event things. So, for example, skins, the uh, Vandal Mask for Halloween, the things that were exclusive items, you'll have a method to get them back if you've unlocked them. So if you lose it, you'll be able to do another mission or something that'll give you access to get it back. Yeah. Um, that you, someone else you, wouldn't I, be able I, to... you are so much like Agrid. I give this really concise, simple response, and then he makes it more complicated. But yes, yeah, so well, you, 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 you are... You are, te you, you are technically correct. You are technically correct, though. That, that, that is the thing. All right, next question. Um, Cascadian asks, uh, what's that ship in the thumbnail for this X? Uh, that is the Glaive, I think. No, it's, it's flat. Uh, it looks like a Pioneer. Hang on. It does look like what, a Pioneer, what, in, you're right. What, 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 sorry, in what thumbnail? In the... Th what ship is this and taking your oh, questions yeah. you'll have to watch the stream yeah you'll just have 
<laughs> Algot's having a good chuckle right now. That ship is not even from the game. It was just a really cool image I found of a spaceship. And well, we, we, we. People are asking if it's legit or not. No, it's not legit. It's just, it's literally just a, a, an image from another game. It was just someone, an image someone okay. made. It kind of looks like an Anvil Pioneer. Uh, me and Algrid did talk about it, but yeah, it's it's completely made up and the points don't matter. Um, so yeah, it, it, I, I just, I got it. I do that every now and again just to have fun at people. I make complete clickbait, yeah. like that is total bullshit. But like, I make it so obvious bullshit that, you know, that it's, it's, it's me <laughs> having a laugh at you guys. You know, you can do it to me too in the comments. I say it all the time. Um, yeah, so yeah, feel free to, to, to banter with me and come back at me. I have no problem with that at all. Um, so yeah. Feel free. I mean, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> don't um, pretend you Shem. guys don't do it. All three of you do it with <laughs> me. Don't pretend so, you don't. I just call you, Shem, man. Um, I, I will <laughs> say that I think we've answered Shem Pastor's question, but stop me if you think uh, we haven't. Uh, they ask, um, heard rumors that the 890 and Carrick tier two beds will lose respawning capabilities. Yeah, we've, we've um, answered that. I think we've kind of covered yeah. that, haven't we? Okay, Silent Skip asks three separate times. He obviously thinks you should be wearing a tinfoil hat. He says X, so it's aimed at you specifically. Uh -huh. Do you have any ideas regarding new aliens coming to Star Citizen? And do you believe in them in real life? Just just try to imagine that at this point, mm -hmm. myself, Khan, and SA are all sat around you, and we're all leaning in and staring at you intently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um... So, first thing I'll say is I don't think we're going to see any new aliens until possible expansion. So, you've obviously got things like the Kathath that are behind the Zion. And I know there's another one behind the Banu. And I can guarantee you, I can hear Algrid screaming from here. There's also one behind the Vandal. Um, yeah. And literally, there's a wall over there. And it's probably three meters away. And there's a giant poster on it of a UFO that says, I want to believe. I think that answers that question um yes um if you look at the funding goals uh the kathak that um x has mentioned are mentioned in there so we're definitely getting them mm. um what would be really cool is if the race the other side of the vandal are the real threat and the vandal are basically chewing through us trying to escape them you're giving that away the story <laughs> that, that is literally yeah, yeah. that is literally what is happening though um, yeah. yeah um, if you know anything about Spreader 42, it basically is based on the fall of the Roman Empire, and you can literally look it up, and it literally says Vandals. Without what, with one less U, is what ended the Roman Empire. So, um, yeah, we, we are the Romans, and the Vandals are coming in, but the Vandals were pushed into Rome because it was another um, set of people behind them pushing them out of their homelands, and and, and because yeah. That's essentially what's happening. Gotcha. Um, and, and, and you know how they talk about how the uh, the Vandal are migratory or, you know, um, what's the word? Mm -hmm. um, they move around. What's the... Um, nomads type of thing. Um, they're yeah. not actually nomads. They've just got nowhere to live because they're being pushed on. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Okie dokie. Um... Um, the the, the Kath Kathath, by the way, I want them to be robots. I just want to put that out now because they're having spirit wars with the Zion, and that, okay. that's that's why they're having spirit wars because they don't have any souls, so they're robots. Okay. Sorry, yes, sir. They're going to be cat people. Chris Roberts <laughs> loves cat. Yeah, I, there's definitely going to be a cat people in there somewhere. Yeah, and Kathath cat. Yeah, I, I can see it. I can see it. Well, you got to do something <laughs> to appeal to the furry cow, don't they? Um, so I don't know. Um, you tell us. Kyle... Does that does that fit the bill for you? I don't know. I've never been a furry. I will never be a furry. I have pictures. Um, Do you want me to pull them out on stream and show people? You can fill... Yeah. No, in fact, <laughs> I demand. I will not read another question until you have produced a picture of me as a furry. <laughs> uh, going downhill really I'm quickly, gonna, guys. I'm going to... I will... I will <laughs> this is I'm going to end up with a channel strike. I'm going to link the, 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 the image in supporters chat just so the other three can see the image that, that I was going to post. But yeah, everyone else, unfortunately, yeah. DMCA, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. But yeah, yeah, because yeah, we'll get in trouble. Yeah, I'm open. Right, okie dokie. Um, so, Alsar J um, says on the topic of the Orion, it's on schedule to return to concept starting next month. Mm. What do you guys think we might see happen with it? We know that it's already grown three times in size. 
Yeah. Can you see that, guys? He sent me this. <laughs> I don't see it yet. No. Yeah, I, I removed it. I only had it up for like two seconds, but yeah. That's what he sent me. Anyway. I'm also going to say this is the other thing. You can come and chat with us in the Discord. We do chat in voice. You yep. can join the Patreon and become a supporter, and you get to see these people making in front of each other. In print. Yes. Well, yeah, before shows and after shows too, we, we make a big habit of talking to people. Uh, no, I can't, I can't show it because it'll, it'll get Badgers in trouble. Um, and I've made him enough fun. Let's be honest, I've made a lot of fun of him today. So he said his, Look, he said guys, his chill. If, if X is stopping or he's holding back from taking the piss out of me, it's because he has no evidence. <laughs> because if he had evidence, I swear to God, he would be all over it. It would be the thumbnail. It would be my badges, background. Badges, go it to the message. Be... Badges, go to the messages between me and you. 29th of the 5th. That's what Hang I was going to link. Yeah, right. 29th of the 5th. Jeez. Yeah. Let's get this back on top because got... we've also got chat going down the uwu. <laughs> and this is not a Twitch thought stream. Yeah, yeah. The 28th of the 5th. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're probably a day before me. The pigeon. I'll just say the pigeon. You'll the know pigeon. what I'm Yeah, yeah. Dude, dude, look at the rest of that body. That yeah, is yeah. clearly not me. Oh, no, I, 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 think, I think I think I'm funny. I think I can first show it in. Um, yeah, no, I definitely wouldn't put that on YouTube. You will no. get demonetized in a heartbeat. Yep, that's why I did. Um, yes. Uh, anyway, moving swiftly on. Um, <laughs> right. Okie yeah. dokie. So, see, I've even come off the questions now. God damn it. Um. So. Um, what do we think about the Orion then? We didn't get around I, to answering I, that. I own one. You were too busy indulging your furry. Yeah, but, 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 I, but I own one. I, I, you know, I think it is a good ship. I know Algrid owns ones. What, I know you don't. Would, what about what about SA and Can? Do you guys have one? Which ship? I didn't catch Orion. that. Orion. Amazing ship. I don't own one. I kind of wish I would have bought a... Like, well, you couldn't buy a CCU in concept, but... Um, yeah, it's going to be a big ship. That being said, it's not a individual ship. It's not even a small group ship. That's an org ship to support. So as long as you have the org to support it, yeah, get one. It's great value. Mm. Yeah, again, I'm with Essie. I think it's going to require a lot of people and a lot of support ships to run an, an Orion properly and efficiently. And that's not my gameplay, so that's why I don't have one. Mm. But I think it is also going to be a very big ship. And I think it may take a while uh -oh. before CIG actually put it in game. Yeah, I, the, the, where it's going to grow to, and again, the off topic, but like, this is a, probably going to be the largest ship in the end that you can, you would have been able to purchase. I, I didn't do it. Be bigger than the. Wasn't me. I didn't do it. What the? F I don't know what you did. Whoa, he did it. It was him. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Oh, you're going to say the stream. Wait, you'll say it. Some guy just set uh, off all the guns at the station and they just went ballistic and I was just, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. I know I interrupted you. Next question. Let's move on. Come on. <laughs> 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 excuse me. Fucking hell. Uh, right. Um, uh, excuse my just, language. That just is allergic to bullshit. Hmm. Yes. Right. Um, it started around about the time you started talking about furries. Right. Um, Okay, so Aurelius Indomitus um, said he was talking earlier about having merchantmen and possibly the Orion. He said uh, he did buy two banning merchantmen because he wanted to sell one in the negotiation room on one of his banning merchantmen. Uh, <laughs> but maybe he can't compete with Astra Armada, so he wants to wait, make one of the banning merchantmen Orion. In that case, mate, go for it. If that's what you want to do, do it. Mm. The Orion's definitely going to be more expensive than a merchantman, so it's not a bad play. In the end, it's going to be just a gigantic, massive ship. So you reckon, yeah, that was something we were talking about before. Someone was asking us which one was more valuable, and and I kind of just came back to the, it really depends on the, the player. Because I think they yeah, are going to be true. roughly the same, in pro you know, like a hundred bucks difference between the two, possibly. At worst or best, you know. So um, it, it just comes down to, do you want to mine, do you want to do shopping and cargo? I, I can't, and I couldn't make that call. And he never followed up, so I can't answer that, so yeah. I'm going to answer this in a slightly more technical aspect. Um, you need to get something that keeps the Banner Merchantman's locked in price. ECG from the Banner Merchantman to something else. 
and then just wait for the Orion to climb above it. That's how you take a ship that's of a higher value and CC you it into one of lower value, or you look around and ask in the look around and try and find someone who has a CCU to a ship that's lower value than the ship you want to go to from that CCU and get it off them. Agard, yeah, as Kim said too, you can actually... I gotta ask Agard, Agard, why are you not at the stream today? Like, you've been here from the start and you're still here and we're almost finished. I'm really confused. I thought you said you had to go somewhere. I'm really confused. So just... He's on his phone. Ah, oh, right. I don't know where he is though. He must... He said he had to go somewhere, somewhere important. But uh, maybe he's just a at a family. He's at a family function doing this. <laughs> wedding. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's probably your viewer. viewer. Mm. No, what I was going to say was that when you're, if you planned it out correctly, you could actually melt the the Banu Merchantman because it will the second one because it will be in your buybacks if you want to get it back. Mm. Um, assuming that it has a certain price point or LTI, and then uh, CCU at the next um, IAE or uh, IAE into an Orion. So you have options of how to do it and save even Why, additional cash I'm off. I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't melt it because then you'd have to buy it back at the higher price. N not credit, no. Yeah. Yeah, so CIT I... CIT have I, 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 changed I, I, the wording I, on buyback to allow them to change the price of complete ships as well, Essie. Yeah. They haven't yeah. done it yet, but the wording has changed to enable them to do it, so... Mm. It has. It's a risk. I guess it depends when you bought it, right? So if it's concept, then you're kind of protected. Um, Cause they've already said those prices will stay the same. So yeah, I guess it, there are a lot of factors there, but yeah. You, yeah. Sorry, just, that, just to, to cut in quickly. Yeah. Um, guys, we are almost out of questions. So while we're discussing this one, if you have a question, pop it in chat, use mm -hmm. the word question anywhere and it will pop out. We'll be able to pull it out of chat. Um, you will not have to wait long at all to get your question answered. So uh, we're, it doesn't we're... have to be about alien week either. Yeah, we're something referencing the game we're past three hours too so technically we should do cut off as well but yeah like if yeah. you get your question we get an answer or answered if not we'll do what we did i don't know if you guys caught during the week uh me and our grid went through and answered probably 30 plus questions on the community tabs so if you have asked questions in the past go look at the community tab of this channel and uh, you can see that we just listed them all out me our grid just rapid fired them i think we did them all in about half an hour um and just yeah. you know he would say what Which, he wanted to do, and I would say what I wanted to do, and I just paraphrased every. Badges even answered a few, didn't you, mate? You were there as well. Yeah. We, yeah. So I just did. I just took what they were saying and shortened it down to a sentence. Yeah. All right. Which tells you how much bullshit that we all speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. True, but factual. Rude. Okay. Um, there's a couple of questions that aren't really questions. You don't. You um, don't then. speak. You don't speak shit, do you, Badges? You only dribble it. Bro, I, I, yeah. What the f I'm dribbling at the minute, I'll tell you. What the um, right. Uh, Center Mass Gamer asked, Do you think we will get alien mining or salvaging ships? Will CIG need to make a newish mechanic for each of them? It feels weird to have different species all mine the same way. Yeah, so design, I've heard a rumor, I get a mine on giant worms. No. <laughs> what the hell's going on? I do you think. Was it, sorry, there was in, invisible parts of this space station, and it's just totally screwed me around. Totally just flew the ship into an invisible part of the space station. Sorry. Yeah, you... Say, say, uh, say a piece can, sorry. I do think the Xi'an, with their focus on being one with nature and them not liking terraforming and stuff, will probably mine in a very different way. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I don't think... I think the mechanic will be similar-ish. The way it looks will probably be different, but I think the actual mini-game that you play for the mechanic will probably be so, fairly similar. Yeah, I'd agree 100% on that. I think um, there there may be certain things that other alien races don't do or things they do that we wouldn't do, just because the resource is specific to that race. Um, but... Um, Will they have ships? Yes. Will there be ships to be able to fly or purchase anytime in the near future? No. Um, I think if they do build different ships that are that specific, they would do them as just shells that you would you potentially would see, but you would never be able to get on board. Um, not, not, not immediately. Eventually, they might flesh them out, but yeah. Because that's just so much work for an existing mechanic. I don't see them putting the effort into it. Um, you know, but, you know, I could be wrong. Maybe they're going to do... Maybe they already have a pipeline planned. Who knows? God, this damn ship. I don't know if you guys see what had happened. Like, the whole wing on the front and the back engine have literally been ripped off, and I can only fly it to the right. 
Look at Oh god! It's a fucking nightmare. Oh god, no. Well, right. we'd fly Drake. Yeah, 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 yeah well, fuck you. That was the only thing I had stop. here that was, um... Oh, shit, I can't even okay. remember. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, I see your point, Santa Mass. I think what we're seeing is we're seeing things from the human perspective, right? There's... You know, what we've seen is already from certain manufacturers is that they are retasking things to be like usable by humans. So there's there's probably the chance that for humans replicating the way other races um, mine or do other certain activities, um, that that's just not kind of cost effective for us. Um, you know, you could do it, but it would be millions to replace it. Whereas replacing the mining laser on your prospect is like meh. 50,000, 100,000 UEC sort of stuff. Um, what I would love to see, and we were talking about this earlier, is something that only aliens can do. So an alien-only industry that's been repurposed for humans. So, you know, we know salvage and all that sort of stuff. Maybe there's some sort of repair. Maybe it's terraforming. Maybe that sort of stuff. Um, Cooking. You know, so I'm, I'm getting really, I'm getting really kind of distracted by X's... I want to say flying. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, <laughs> it's called crashing with stale budget. It's, it, yeah, falling with stale. Most people would have. Absolutely what it isn't. Most people would You know what's going to happen? I'm going to get to the landing pad and it's going to go, oh, sorry, your shit's been given away. You, you're going to land, you're going to open the ramp, and then it's going to explode. Mm. <sighs> Just because. Next question, Tim, I think. Um, yeah. So, Nikki Griffiths asks, this may be an off-topic question, um, but you boys are the ones who ask, with the cargo refactoring coming, will we be able to scan ships and see the cargo to perhaps liberate? Yes, that's the plan, I believe. I think you can do that with, because you can do that with mining vessels now, can't you? You can see what they've got on them. I think it will depend as well on whether the... Sh where the cargo is like i know there is the msr the taurus uh at least are supposed to have shielded cargo in some of the some of the storage i think on something like a brand new merchantman it's probably going to be very difficult i think on something like a hull where you've got exp exposed cargo containers probably very easy fuck you badges <laughs> fuck you i did it I just love the fact that you tried to repair above the platform before you landed. Like, that's how much you were going to back yourself there. Yeah, because it was... No, I wasn't trying about landing. It was just like it's difficult to get there. But I got there. Um, if chat fancies putting up... You know, like, they do the scoreboards for, like, the Olympics when people do the figure ah, skating and yeah, stuff. Out of ten, if people <laughs> want to put their scores for X's <laughs> landing in the chat, you guys feel free. Do you fill your boots? We'll would, see what people think. Most people would Negative numbers are allowed. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, kudos to you for not EVAing. Um, cool. So, yes, I, that is absolutely the point. I think... Oh, you've got a 6.9 out of 10. Is that just so you can kind of have 69 in there? Yeah, that's what that, 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 yeah, that, that was. That was. Yeah. <laughs> you got a 5... <laughs> You got a seven, you got a 56 out of 79. That's a very specific labor criteria or scoring criteria. Um, oh dear. Yes. So, yeah, there are some ships. I think there's talk about like shielded cargo bays. So, in certain areas, it won't be visible to scan unless you've got an advanced scanner or something. We don't know how, exactly how it's going to work. But hopefully, that'll give people the chance to play like. Firefly and Serenity, where you can, you know, operate in the grey, try to maintain the facade of being legitimate and actually, you know, not always being so. Yeah. Mm. Yes, officer, I don't have any guns, it's only scrap. And no, you can't look behind these doors. Absolutely. You have a um, Let's be honest, the officer is going to be way too easy to bribe. <laughs> That's a right, cool, that's, that, that's, that is a All cool right. thought, though, if you actually had an alien version of a ship that they bring out down the, the road. I'm just thinking about what you're saying about how fundamentally the entire gameplay could be different just from an alien perspective. That could be really interesting. Mm. Down the road when they've got more people and more time. Yes. Imagine mining and it's completely different. Yeah, well, that could be really interesting. 
Chris said in an interview at one point, he said there's not going to be a Star Citizen 2, that Star mm-hmm. Citizen will evolve over time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, that's his plan. It's an organic game. There'll never be a second one. It should go on for, you know, whatever amount of time gaming's enjoyable until they plug us into machines and we live in games. Um, so that being said, I mean, yeah, there definitely could be, you know, 15 years down the line, mm-hmm. you know, complete reconcepts of these alien races. Yep. No, Okie dokie. Uh, Janos Morrissey says, uh, was everyone surprised there was no alien concept ship? Do we think it's a sign of them halting on new concepts and completing what we already have? We did uh, kind of go over this before, but there's evidence that there could be one coming down like next week or whatever. So, yeah. We'll see. There's, there's the faint suggestion, so no, I'm not particularly surprised, and no, I do not believe this is a sign of them halting on new concept ships, because a lot of what we're waiting on requires tech that is not yet in the game so we're not waiting on ships to be completed yep. we're waiting on tech to be implemented so that ships complete completed completely if one thing cig's proven is that if they can make money on a sale they'll do it yep. yeah yeah i think the other thing is a lot of the concepts they need to figure out the gameplay before they can build the ship because the last thing they want to do is build the ship and then go this doesn't work with the mechanic we've designed <laughs> But let's be honest, that's not the last thing they want to do because they've done it so many times, but maybe they've learned their lesson, maybe? Yeah. They have talked about wanting to stop doing that because I think somebody actually sat down and pointed out to them how much it was costing them. Yeah. Okay, so Jason A says, um, if we have, sorry, if we're finished on that, I'm just jumping through. Um, yeah, go, go, go. But it has been a long time now. So Jason mm-hmm. A, considering how many large ships are left to do and knowing they take 12 to 18 months to do, what, oh, if anything, can you see CIG doing to speed up the pipeline? Not again. I had this question last week. You just started again? No. Oh, was, okay. Not, not, okay, so long story short is at the moment we don't have very many people working on the game, essentially. Um, we know yeah. they're about to expand out the entire team to start working on Star Citizen. If you take, let, let, let's just say for argument's sake, I don't, I don't know how many exactly people are working on ships, but you take 10 people and you train up another 40, that essentially increases the speed at which you make ships. It's that. It's that simple. They, um, they're going to put more think, people on the on the problem. Yeah, and the the other thing, you know, they're building tools as they go. Yep. So you know, if you look at the time that it takes to recreate Stanton in in Planet Tech V four. Yep. Um, it took them about three months just to recreate it with assets they already had. Yep. Now the speed at which they're creating stuff for Pyro has yep. far outstripped that. So you, you can yeah, even it's... you can even do that with ships because it originally the first couple of ships took them two years to make. Now they can make a, a small ship in a couple of months. You know, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. I, I, I think you know the other thing that they're waiting on for the cap ships, um, in particular, is having the server capacity to be able to test them. Yeah, 100%. I think the other thing is, at the moment, we don't have a lot of large ships. I think what we'll suddenly go to is, instead of getting a fighter every six months, we'll go to having four or five large ships in parallel, and we'll get one at each event, which will be great for those of us that live large, love the large ship gameplay, but if you don't, well, you better find somebody with a big ship that you can crew on. I think our grid might actually be a bot at this point. Uh, he's telling people to like and subscribe and all this bullshit in the chat. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but I mean, that thing that you're supposed to do, execute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, no, I'm just not good yeah. at it, man. I'm just not good at that shit. I, know, I apologize, like, but I have just decided that your name is Japanese, but Kurushibo says, um, <laughs> if this has not been already discussed earlier, what size crew do you think will be required to comfortably operate the BMM once all game systems are in place. What did they say? Go, what's on the... Hang on. Let's, uh, let's have a um, die. On the ship matrix, it's eight. Hey, guys. Yeah. Eight. Guys, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I got to run. I got to put kids to bed. Um, yeah, mate, you go. No worries, man. This, this has been a long one. A long one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we should have no, we should have say... ended 25 minutes ago, so you're, you're not wrong. Yeah. I would say five bodies to pilot the BMM. Uh, real players maybe get away with three. I guess... All right. It's been all right, fun. Thank you for the See questions, you, everybody, and everybody that watched. And uh, yeah, talk to you all soon. Love Bye. you. Um, yeah, I think it, it depends what you mean off right. I mean, if it, if it's take off, go to a place and land. That's mm. one figure. If it means go and make effective sales uh, and keep the stock moving whilst being able to launch this fighter, mm. that's something else entirely. 
Yeah, because um, you, know, you, you think about it, you're probably not going to need people on gun turrets while you're selling stuff, because you'll tend to be in more of a safe space, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. It also exactly. depends if you're counting players or NPCs, because True. The, and how much you're going to blade and what that all looks like and all the other things. There's too many unknowns, but I wouldn't expect to fly it with less than probably four players on board. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to run it through in my head. I'm thinking big gun tur turret operator, um, if you can link those two smaller turrets together, or even link all the turrets to the big turret, you could probably get away with one person on a turret. Um, but then you're going to need like a co-pilot and an engineer. So I'm saying yep. four. Four would be the absolute minimum like, I could probably push it to. Zen Strutter asks, will we be able to fit a Nova tank into the Bunny Merchantman? Yep. Space-wise, yes. From the ground, unsure but unlikely well no i got that depending ramp. on the dimensions got, of the ramp you got that ramp that drops all the um, way down to the ground dude that whole that whole yeah, cargo bay the but, platform goes to the ground depending on clearance and stuff but you could absolutely use an srv to put it into the hold and then drive through into the cargo bay so oh that's true i've actually done the maths on this and the answer is it might fit it might not but it will be one nova tank on the elevator at a time yeah. You've it's, done the math. It's close. And the answer is maybe. <laughs> no, it yeah. is close. Like, it's technically too long, but if you tilt the turret up, will it actually go under length? I'm not sure. I've just spent because three weeks working it out. Question. And uh, the answer is maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a game, and I can test it. I don't want to say for definite. Uh, but it's yeah. close. Oh, fucking hell. All right, I mean, so what you can't definitely right, do is you can gonna, definitely put three cyclones We're going to quick fire the rest of this. So Absolute King said, which plant are they going to do um, alien week out so I can go to see the ships? Uh, it's not that sort of, of event. You cannot, I am afraid. Mm. Um, they did actually, what, no, 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 he's right. They did do that at previous years. And they did, they? did, and they did have it at ex the Expo Hall. Maybe that's what's coming next week. Uh maybe um hmm, i don't know that's a really good that's a really good point that's a really good point sorry yeah but, but he's right um, they uh, previous <laughs> years they've had them in the expo hall so yeah hmm. uh best name ever stop and sniffer says when do you expect the corsair's price to increase and how much definitely at launch hmm. that always happens when they are when they go become flyable the price goes up Yep. How much I would say a MSR, the 400i, are pretty good uh, indicators of good points to think of. Yeah. Mm. Um, so this is haggard, um, or or this I shagged um, says, um, tell me which one it is. I'm really interested to know. Um, what kind of salvage does the Kramer do besides more, if any, can it do all the processes? Yeah, so, yes. so, so it's all the processes. Um, it doesn't yeah. need to blast the ship apart, so you actually have to use blast charges to break a ship down uh, with, with the, the, vul the Vulture. Uh, it's actually got lasers to chop it up, so you, you, you can just sit back easy mode in the ship. You don't have to risk getting out and EVAing, and then, yeah, as you yeah. said, the, the extra processes. Yeah, they've got drones for like component recovery and all sorts. So yeah, um, Reclaimer, King of Salvage. Kishkin says, "Would you rather a new alien concept ship or them, or, or them offer the ability to purchase an alien race like the Tavarin to play?" I do think the Tavarin will eventually come into the PTU. It'll probably be the, and I think Algrid said this before too. We've we've talked about this. It'll probably be the first alien race that's playable. Um, makes a lot of sense um, to me. Yeah, I think that will probably be sold as an add-on to your account where you get a Tavarin slot. Mm. Um, the first time I encounter a Tavarin or a Xi'an or a Banu with a Manchester or Newcastle accent, I'm going to commit homicide. <laughs> In game. In game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because that's just not the accent that I would ever expect what? to come okay, out of their well, mouths. Okay, well, a little side tangent, because I'm now, you've piqued my interest. What, wouldn't it be more croaky, like a German or something? Like, um, like what's what, what's a bird accent? Do they squawk and 
strut and how does that work? How do you say? I don't know. <laughs> I had to ask a question. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know where to go with that. Um, okay, so very quickly, uh, uh, kind of the same thing. Thoughts on uh, from Namek. Uh, thoughts on playable aliens. Uh, yes. Yep. Uh, yes. It'll be I think thing. CIG have talked about it, they have. but when is the unknown? Yeah, and they always kind of said it would be like an expansion pack or whatever. They've, they've said that before. So yeah. 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 And I think I, I think definitely they'll fill out. So you know, so say they do a Zion expansion pack, they'll fill out their culture, their buildings. There'll be heaps more ships. You know. Um, and, and if you think about their expansion pack, because they've already announced aliens on the other side of them, instead of it being like a Zion and human thing, it would be like a Zion and Kathak, uh, Kathak thing. So that it'll mm -hmm. be a sort you'd play as a Zion and, and, and you'd learn more about the Zion through playing them. Um, and it'll be the same thing with the Banu and whatever alien race was behind them, which I've now forgotten. Where, yeah. And, and in time, let's be honest, you might even see, if this game lasts long enough, you might even see the race behind the Vandal and play as a Vandal. I oh, shit you not. Yeah. Um, so, uh, K9 Music says, um, is there a point in buying this? So this is a follow-on from the previous question. Mm -hmm. Is there a point in buying the Defender CCU if you own the Corsair CCU, considering the Corsair will go up in price? Um, no. Yeah, we answered this before because they don't look up. Yeah, not at the moment, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, Texas Space Navy asks, will the Bunny Mushroom hit $750 by the time it is flyable? Yeah, that's, so that's yes. kind of what we mentioned before. It's more than likely going to land between 750 to 1,000. And nice to see you, by the way, uh, Texas Space Navy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Benji M says, please speculate, considering we're able to hire workers, should they be available everywhere, even within organizations, or limited to NPC factions? Um, M M NPC factions, the size of a solar system, the number of people in the solar system, everything. It's all yeah. that all falls if under, under quantum. If you're asking whether or not NPCs can join our organizations uh, when they're not being directly employed and that we can hire them within those organizations to come with us, I think that's tough. I don't think that's an easy programming hack because one thing that we all expect when you go and join an organization is the loyalty and how do you program loyalty um uh, you know at the moment the, the you can, npcs you, you, you can fake it mate with ai like i've well, already what i mean is at okay. the moment that the npcs are um they have a number of qualities the quanta this is mm -hmm. so the, yep. the the simulation they have um risk um they have how likely they are to break the law Yep. Um, how greedy they are, how motivated they are, um, and all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So that kind of comes to so do you know how they determines they, what jobs they'll make. They, they can actually use the human rating system as a guide to craft the AI. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you have a um, like look, because the AI in a lot of games cheat, right? So if mm -hmm. I'm doing a task, right, as a it doesn't matter what the task is, right? So as a human player, so if I'm doing the task and I'm a rank five um minor turret operator whatever if you can fake it with time right they can go well the, the here is a hundred rank five and you can pick the number it can be every single rank five person in the game uh the average rank rank five player is somewhere between four to five minutes so when the ai does it they just roll a dice and it's somewhere between four to five minutes they can, and then they can fake that and just literally play a timer. Boom, it's done. Oh, and by the way, the average that they kind of pop out this material at that they've made is this. And then they do a roll. So they could do a roll where they make it 100% efficient or they could be, you know, whatever the efficiency is. They can fake all that. And, and, and I think they're actually... That's one of the reasons why they're making that rating system is they can use the human system to basically make it feel more real. And if you understand... I think there's also more layers to this question like if oh, yeah. you're meaning in the simplistic ma manner of in my org hangar will i be able to hire mpts to unload my ships yes mm. if you mean will you actually be able to have an in org like five or six members of your org who are an mpc Oof, i don't know cig i don't think i've ever talked about that yeah, i'm that... sure they could but i don't think yeah. they've planned on it yeah that is 100 correct they've never talked about it but but, but the question it could be possible then become yeah yeah you know because I think that kind of org thing 
the more you delve into it, the more you begin to realize that having people in your org and players in your org, you've only got to look at Eve for this. That sort of stuff gets very, very complicated. So you have compartmentalized information because Eve is rife with people trying to put players into other organizations, other corps, um, and, and just having them you know, kind of spy, be aware, you know, the amount of EVE players that have multiple accounts to enable that sort of stuff. A lot of them have it to fly their ship, some of them have it to enable them to infiltrate and not be identified in any way, shape or form with the org that they are actually loyal to. Um, so yeah, it, it, it would, would, would be a tough there. one, I think. Um, guys, I... We, we, we're getting more and more and more questions, so... a lot of which I think are repeating so we, we'll, we'll do the cutoff now yeah. but i do want to ask you guys what do you think of this i think it looks kind of cool i do like it yeah it might be my new favorite defender skin i'm too sure yeah. i do like black like i'm a black and red person obviously when it comes to colors but uh i can kind of give away to a pink the blue i could maybe it'll take it but uh Next question, Yeah. Yep. Um, does Execute have more than one hat? That's six more, yep. And six I got more. multiples cool. of this one, yep. Okay, uh, can uh, we expect value push. NPCs and our value maximum future? Um, I don't see why not. CIG have talked about us being able to hire Xi'an or Banu NPCs, but they will have special needs that you have to meet because they're not humans. Yes. That especially makes sense after the machine of, of what's her face? Is it the angry duck or whatever it's called? Oh, you thing. oh the, 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 you're talking about the cin cinematic the belligerent the duck. Yeah, that's it. With yeah. the Mercury Star on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, John Crew talked about a third ground vehicle size a few Star Citizen live episodes ago. Is there hope that we'll get giant dune like spice miners? Well, we definitely Maybe. need a ship that can actually haul 32 SU containers around, so yeah. for loading and unloading sh yeah. ships, like... And, and yeah. Agra, Agra and I talked about that on the Mule, Mule Buyers Guide as well. You, you, you've got this thing that can carry one SCU, but then we know that the raft ones are a thing, so there's got to be... It's just, it, if there's one thing there, there's got to be the other thing to do it, so it, 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 it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, it's just that simple. If, if there's one thing there, there's got to be the other thing to, to do it for you. So, that, that, and look at the Mule... That does this tiny little box. There's got to be something that does the big one. So yeah, yeah. And, and and I'm using that analogy because that relates to what you're saying. Sorry, uh, if I butchered or made that complicated. Sorry. Um. Mm. Yeah. Argwood asks: Player controlled NPCs or playable only races? Which would you prefer? I think people use or too much. We should use and. Mm. Alien races. I don't think. Players controlling NPCs is going to be good for the game long term, but that's my personal opinion. Because people are assholes. Um, Stink figure, what do you think of the chances of an alien ground vehicle, like a hover rock? <laughs> we got the knock, so I don't see why not. Yeah. Um, Shempasta, that's not a question. Um, and Zen Strata uh, says, will they sell NPCs for real money? <sighs> what no. slave NPCs? No, no. They'll yeah. be right. Well, they Maybe kind the of do, will. it's... Well, no, they don't have that. They have indentured workers now, they don't have slaves. Oh, they but changed the, other the names, thing that's voice, right. Yeah. But to answer what he's asking, it's this is this multiple packs thing that CIG talked about way, 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 way back and have never brought up since. There was the concept that you get a customizable NPC if you have an extra game pack, but... They haven't talked about it a long time. I wouldn't get your hopes up on it. It may happen, yeah. it may not. Oh, I don't know if I should say this, but yeah, that, that annoys me that they're changing the names of things. Do you know they're trying to change the name of um, Boba Fett's ship? They don't want to call it the Slave One anymore. Like, if you go play the Lego game, it's not called Slave One. It's called Boba Ship's Bounty Hunting Ship. Anyway, I digress. Okay. Um, we are at the end of the questions. All right, then. Um... All right, I think. Uh... Um, oh, Shem Pasta's not a question. Was that your Banu Merchman looks like a cooked, lo cooked lobster? Mm, it's definitely darker, but I don't mind it in black. I'm going to be completely honest. It's kind of got these nice little subtle blue and red, uh, pinky highlights. There's something cool about it. it, it uh, matte black is always a good color. So yeah. Mm. 
Anyway, um, I will land after the stream. That's fine. Um, I'll kick it back over to the this one. I think that's the right one. Um, no, it's completely the wrong one. All right. So yeah, thank you for joining me, Badgers Can, and we did have uh, essay here for as well. Um, you know, uh, the no, usual stuff. No, I must strip up. Oh no, I'm me again. Woo. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, like this type of content. Um, if you like it, if you dislike it, dislike it. Um, again, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the stream today. We did talk about a lot of different things. Um, if they do bring out an alien ship, we will definitely talk about it and give you our thoughts on that. Um, other than that, I do have a plan for a show for this weekend, but I've got to, I haven't even talked to these guys about it. So we have to, uh, so the first one we've done in a while, cause we've had a lot of, uh, Invictus stuff. So everyone's kind of been hands off for the last couple of weeks. So yeah. Um, other than that, uh, is there anything you can or badges you want to say before we head off? Uh, uh, Algrid's not here. Like, subscribe, Patreon, join the Discord. The guys are around the Discord to chat. We do play Star Citizen, as you can see from X actually playing the game live today on stream. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for people to talk, talk about the game, play the game with, jump into the Discord. There's usually people kicking about. Yep. No, no it, it's it's definitely um, a more text-based Discord, I think, though. But I do, you know, those of us that do hang out and talk uh, definitely reap the benefits, so yeah. All right. Um, my camera's died, so this is the perfect time to end the stream. Um, he's been Badgers, the voice in the void has been Can, and I've been Execute, and we'll catch you in the next one.